Do we have audio this time? We do have audio this time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is for sure. <laughs> Ready? And go. Yo, 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 and hello and welcome to the 205th episode of GameSpeak Podcast. New episodes go for free feed subscribers every Wednesday in audio format on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, and all of your favorite podcast platforms, as well as in video format on YouTube so you can see us in stunning high definition, where we need you to hit subscribe and click that notification bell. Do it. We are now streaming live every Tuesday at 7.50 p.m. CST on twitch.tv slash Podcast. if you want to catch the show as it happens before anyone else. This show is two childhood BFFs bringing you all things video games. And now a third. You can find us online. <laughs> That's how we're going to change it. Now you can find us online at gamesweekpodcast.com where we need you to subscribe to our official newsletter so we can make sure you never miss an episode. Also, be sure to join the community in the Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash Podcast to hang and talk games with other nerds like us. I'm one of your hosts, Jamal Jafra, alongside Brent. Buss it, Bass? Have we done that? That works. Buss it. Yeah, like bus it, baby. Yeah, bus it, bus it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we uh, we and then all uh, to our to the far right. Uh, we have <laughs> I lay this one down. We got Devin the dude John Mayer over here. Dude, oh, okay. yeah, okay. I like John and I combined two celebrities to make one <laughs> awesome <laughs> Jamie like person. That's Wait, in who's the wing. John? John Mayer. John Mayer. Oh, oh! Uh, who's the dude though? Devin the dude is Devin a rapper, okay, okay. older rapper. Yeah, okay. he might not be as noteworthy as John Mayer, but nah, they're about the same. No, but <laughs> <laughs> in my mind, I didn't know, I didn't realize who you're talking about for some reason. But I love John Mayer. He's, you know, we're all just waiting on the world to change. You yeah, know what I'm that's saying? That's what I was yeah, gonna say. For sure. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of waiting on the world to change, how do y'all feel about the uh, the changes we had this past week? The reason. We had to miss the first ever week of GameSpeak. Pod- this is the first time we've ever missed an, a week. We, no, we missed. I feel like we missed a week uh, back. No, we just pushed it a day. Uh, it yeah. was like during the hurricane. Yeah, or we've something. never missed a week until a this full... past week. Yeah. So we've broken our perfect attendance record, but we're going to make up for it for you guys with an ultra long, extra badass episode today. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, two topics. Two double topics. Feature. Double the, the double news. feature. We yeah. got all the news from the past two weeks. So, you oh, know, Jesus. we're going to load you guys up. <laughs> we're going to tell you guys what's up. Yeah. You know? yeah. We're sorry so that we missed. Ba- you know? Yeah. It's basically what us. happened. Yeah. It, 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 we wouldn't have done it if like we could have avoided it but what happened is like i was out of power for five days because in texas we don't believe in having a stable uh uh you know energy grid so basically preparing for shit yeah yeah we were like oh there's a there's a snowstorm coming that's gonna you know drop us down to like you know below zero at some point possibly Eh, fuck it. We'll just, you know, do what we're going to do. Well, and the and fact so. of the matter is, you know, even if you guys had, uh, you know, I had power in my house, but it's like we, there's no way we could have driven there. Yeah. You know, uh, the, yeah. The, the snow roads all were over the road. Literally just undrivable. There were like, you know, inches of ice on the road. Yeah. You know what I mean, that we didn't, they uh, like here no in plows. Texas, they didn't salt them. We don't have <laughs> plows. We don't have anything. Yeah. And, literally nothing was done. And even if we would have been able to get to each other. They were doing rolling brownouts, which uh, yeah. for people who aren't from Texas, they basically just like will give you an hour of power. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, we're going to take that and give it to someone else, actually. Yeah, we get um, like an I would see that's what was going on in my house. I'd get like an hour of power and then I get like 30 minutes of uh, of darkness. Of darkness. But fortunately, I was, you know, on the switch pretty heavy that day. So yeah. I would like dock the switch when I got power, and then undock the switch <laughs> nice. when I didn't have power, and it just kind of nice. worked out, you know. Well, I'm glad you had an hour of power. I had five <laughs> days of zero power. Five days. Yeah, I'm five sorry. days. Oh my I feel God. bad with my luxurious but brownout over there, you know. Yeah, what I mean? and see with the brownouts though. So like, if we would have tried to record, and then a brownout happened, we would have lost all of the audio. It would have just been pointless. Yeah. So we're like, let's just wait. Here we are, you know, and now we're here and we're doing this. And so we're making up for it. But uh, speaking of Snowvid, uh, you know, let's talk <laughs> about the other things. 
Uh, it was nice though playing in the snow. You know, all things considered, you know, you know. I did have a grand time. You look at the bright side <laughs> of things. It was a lot of fun, like throwing snowballs and building snowmen and doing all that good shit. We don't get to do very often. We've maybe gotten to do that twice this year. Yeah. How lucky are crazy. we as Texans? Oh, you know, what and I mean? maybe Huntsville. you, maybe yeah. you hunt villains. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me and my brother took the the trucks off an old skateboard I had laying around and and hit up a hill and. Ah, uh, you snowboarded. Skateboarded or s- snow skate. Snateboarded? Snated. Snowscape? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Snotted. Snotted. Yeah. Snotboarding. Yeah. Um, also, the Mortal Kombat trailer, movie trailer came out. Oh, uh, my goodness. Did y'all watch I it? I watched yes. it. It looked dope. Like 10 times. Honestly, this is like <laughs> the <laughs> first time I've ever watched a video game movie trailer and been like, damn. That's going to be dope. I I, I've actually seen it. people complain about it, and I'm like... Like what? Like, they're just, just like... look campy oh, yeah, or it, corny or just... It's chill. supposed to... Be. Yeah, it's supposed to be. That's the point. Like, but I think people were like, it's not corny enough. Like, they're trying to take it too seriously. I'm like, okay. I think it's <laughs> just you right. You can't please <laughs> Yeah, you can't please everyone. It's like, guys, <laughs> let's, just, let's just let it happen, all right? It, it, there's no way it can be anything worse than the Resident Evil film franchise. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's or, wait. or the Mortal Kombat movie that came before it. Uh, Annihilation or whatever. What was it called? What was the movie called? There was two of them, wasn't there? There mm-hmm. was Mortal Kombat and Mortal... And I will what not stand for the <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> Mortal Kombat is my shit. The, mo- the original movies. Oh, I mean, I love them, but, but I feel they like are bad. They're really bad, <laughs> but they're like... Uh, but I love them. Mortal okay? Kombat. And I feel like this movie is kind of going with that same vibe as the yeah. original Mortal Kombat movies, which I'm cool with. There's you know like that I mean? dope scene where Sub Zero like takes the blood out freezes of someone and freezes it and then stabs him with it. Oh, yes. I feel like they might have ruined too many cool fatalities yeah. from the movie with the trailer. Well, he didn't kill him. He didn't kill him with that. Yeah, but that was they, just a they cool showed attack. Uh, Kano like blowing somebody up and or like ripping her heart out or something. He did some mm. fucked up shit. I don't the, know. But yeah, uh, that, that move by Sub-Zero I feel like was very true to the game. Yeah. So I, there, I'm, yeah. I've got high hopes. And, and the and Scorpion says, get over here, you know, oh, in the yeah, trailer. Yeah, he Jax did. gets his arms blown off I by even like the uh, two Sub-Zero. Cage no, that, that was. Guy they got. That, I think that was. Uh, that was. That wasn't. Uh, no, it was Jax. I think it was. Jax. Yeah, it was Jax. Yeah. Who was it that? Uh, it sh- who they showed Ermac. They showed. They showed Jax. They showed the Jax. katana. I think with the katana. Uh, with yeah. The, you know, blades. They didn't show. Uh, uh, what's his name? The, um, the the American dude, Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage. Yeah, we yeah. didn't see any Johnny Cage. I don't know if he's gonna be in it with that new character Cole. Yeah. Cole seems like a Johnny Cage type character, but I would yeah. be surprised if we don't at least hear about like a reference to Johnny. Yeah, Cage. like you maybe I mean? in his house, like there's like a poster of Johnny Cage yeah. or something. Yeah. Or this could be a, like a lot of people are thinking it could be a setup too for a sequel that's gonna be like a fully involved in the universe. Mm. They're kind of because the. The director actually did a video where he kind of walks through the whole trailer and explains a lot of the shit. It was really cool. So the MKCU. Talk- <laughs> yeah, the new <laughs> MKCU that he's making. Um, but he said, like, the, the Cole character, he's, they specifically introduced a new one so that people who are new to Mortal Kombat can take the ride with this new character and learn. Yeah. And then people have to, you know, people in the movie have to explain to this new character how shit works with the, with the competition. Yeah, show. that's. I, I think that's necessary. So, yeah, yeah, because there's a lot of younger kids that, you know, don't really fuck with Mortal Kombat. And I think it's fun to have a new character, you know? Like, I think you are af- afforded that liberty as a director or yeah. a writer to, like, add your own little character to the show. As long as you keep the rest of it relatively faithful, you know? like. I like how they're just like, it's a birthmark. It's like a fucking dragon. <laughs> <laughs> like, In a circle. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, isn't that your birthmark? And it's like. <laughs> She's like, you've been chosen. Yeah, it's like, all right. Okay. But anyways, yeah, so that. Um, also, uh, you know, be sure to go check out our YouTube channel, uh, guys, and watch our trailer reaction videos and my new canceled video games series as well, uh, if you are interested. But, yeah, let's get into the stuff because this is going to be a long episode. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff, too. Yeah. So just so you guys know, we're using n- gaming news articles from around the web, and we don't claim any of the articles as our own. We're just bringing them all here to throw them in your face. So you have the news. Uh, Brent, did you want to start this off uh, with the Nintendo stuff, or do you want to just get into that later? Yeah, we could go ahead and just bust it off with the Nintendo stuff if you want. 
Uh, um, there's a lot of Nintendo stuff, so I'm gonna just go through it, and we can, you know, stop me if yeah, you want to yeah. talk about anything. I'll probably stop and talk about some things. Okay. Uh, but these are the Nintendo Switch or Direct announcements. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, we got the Skyward Sword remake and uh, Joy Cons that are coming with it. So that's kind of cool. I mean, I feel like we got to talk about this a little bit. You know what I mean? We we pretty much predicted this shit. You know, first of all, uh, we did it yeah. again. You we, know, we once did. more. But we also we also got an argument about the the controls. I told you for Switch Lite, they were going to do it with uh, all buttons and no control, uh, no uh, motion controls. And you're like, the, the game would suck without motion controls. I told you they were going to do oh, it. I still think it'll suck without motion controls. But like, you know. You but, have the option for motion controls too, you know. But I mean? yeah, but even on the Switch version, like the non-Switch Lite version, there's an option for no motion controls. I feel like that might actually destroy the game. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I think it could still be fun because it's going to be like Obi Wan Adventures, which is like one of my favorite games of all time, just because of the way the sword feels. Like you're yeah. controlling his sword with the D pad, or yeah. not the D pad, the uh, the right thumbstick. The, yeah. You know what I mean. So I, I think it could work, but also I think the ideal way to play this game is obviously going to be how the creators intended it to be yeah. played, which is with the you know Joy-Con in each hand. And honestly, this is probably going to be the optimal way to play it because like the Joy-Cons are so much more responsive than the Wii modes, obviously. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> hopefully they put some uh, effort into making those controls feel better. Yeah, and but. you know, if you have a Switch Lite and you want to play it, uh, you know, the the right way you know you could still hook joy cons up to your switch light it just won't you know you'll still you'll just have to play on a little screen yeah you good know luck I mean? doing that like <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be that like looking awful. at a like six inch screen from like <laughs> 10 feet away no but yeah like i i think um it it doesn't – I don't know. It doesn't excite me, first off, because this is, like, my least favorite of the Zelda games. Like, but – You're not alone in that. You yeah. know, like, you, that's not an unpopular opinion. Like, a lot of people really didn't like this game for some reason. But I, I – it's one of my favorites, and I've been calling for it for a while. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, and I'm not I'm not against it coming out, but I am against it being $60 because I know it's going to be $60. Yeah, that's some fuckery. But, I mean, they got away with it with uh, Link to the Past. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, but that was, like, a full remake. Like, they completely – remade like the way it looked and everything like they Fair you know, enough, but you know, mean, like the, what have they, they done can, with this it's also a much smaller and less engaging game if you think about it i mean you know what i mean you take that back i'm not just I, i'm not trying to be a <laughs> hater or anything but it's a game boy game you know it's, even if you put a new coat of paint on it it's a game boy but game, it was you know it was I mean? made like literally remade like square by square like they were like we're gonna fucking exactly <laughs> yeah but like <laughs> just the, the the map i mean but like for the rest of it you know like they completely changed the art style. They they changed like everything. They made it beautiful. I'm not like hating on the game. I really enjoyed the Zelda game. I'm just saying they got away with it once. They'll do it again. Oh, they absolutely will. But I'm not paying for this. I'm not paying for this game. Brent I'm will. I'm gonna hit it on sale or something. I'm probably Nintendo not gonna... games don't go on sale. Who the fuck <laughs> you think you is? <laughs> I'll wait until the next generation. Yeah. Comes up. <laughs> you can still buy it. Like I never played the original Skyward Sword until after the Wii was until like Wii U was out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Breath of the Wild is still sixty dollars. Like it. Shoot. It came out on Wii U. <laughs> Every now and then you'll get a sale and it'll be like five dollars off. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nintendo knows what they got, <laughs> like you know, so they don't fuck around. Yeah, it's their bread and butter. Anyways, okay, so uh, then they announced that uh, in, the characters from Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles Two, <laughs> Xenoblade, Xenoblade, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two, Pyra and Mirth, Mirth, Mithra, Mithra. Yeah, sorry, I don't play Xenoblade Chronicles. No one too. does. I apologize. <laughs> no, well, they got a shitload of characters from there on Smash. I know. Uh, so it was an interesting trailer. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm down. He's like, like, where's Mithra? <laughs> Whoa. I'm sure if I like played Xenoblade Chronicles, I would be so hyped about uh, that. Yeah. You Their know? pants look weird. Their pantaloons, dude. Like, uh, they have like parachute s cyber pants. <laughs> like, I don't know how to explain it. It's nice that we have another transforming character, like uh, like Zelda yeah. and Sheik used to be. You know. Yeah. Uh, then let's see. Th this isn't in any order, by the way. This was like the last announcement they made, but they announced Splatoon three, which uh, I think a lot of people are probably going to be hyped about. It looked like it was more involved than the other Splatoon games. Like it showed her like getting char character created and then walking through the city and shit. I don't know. 
It looked like if you you like mixed like uh, Mad Max and Splatoon together, yeah, like for like, some reason. Like the game, it, sh- it showed it start up, and she's like off in the desert, like sitting there all dehydrated looking, and like that's how they did the character creation screen. I'm like, this. Yeah. I, it looked like something with a story that was gonna follow it. You know what I mean? But then she just got on like a bus or whatever, and there was like weird like chicken fish and stuff. Like none of it looks like it makes any sense, but people love that game or that franchise. So yeah, it's pretty popular. Um, the one I'm the most excited about though is Mario Golf Super Rush, which got announced. Yeah, this looks tight. I'm really upset that this game uh is coming out before or after Mario Tennis because I feel like they fucked up with Mario Tennis by not putting in an RPG like story like they did with the Game Boy games. Yeah, and they learned that oh we fucked up, so now they're doing it right with the golf game. And I'd much <laughs> rather have Mario Tennis with a cool RPG than Mario Golf. Yeah, but Mario Golf, you know, the Game Boy game was also really fun. You know. Yeah, it was, but uh, they could have done it for both. It just pisses me off. You know, like this makes me mad. They better go back to Mario Tennis and DLC it or they something. They do like Mario Tennis Two or Mario yeah. Tennis RPG or something. Yeah. But I mean Mario Golf looks tight though. It has like some interesting modes. It's got yeah, like a full say, RPG. That one mode where you're like rushing where like it's four people and you're all playing at the same time trying to like race to the hole. It looked like fun. <laughs> yeah. It it, it just li- oh <laughs> <laughs> <Can't we? laughs> uh, I saw that. Did Ti- t- Tiger Woods got in a car wreck today or something? Deviant like that? said you can't you can't be hating on golf when Tiger Woods <laughs> just drove into a sand trap. <laughs> Too soon. Oh, a sand trap. That's fun. okay. So yeah, he's all right. They just had to use the jaws of life or whatever. But uh, no, I, apparently they did. But really? yeah, I he heard he broke his leg or something. Yeah, broke something. I don't. I didn't. Hmm. I saw an article title. I didn't read into it. Yo, yo, yo. what's up, stressed? Oh, what's, uh, this Josh. <laughs> what's <laughs> up? I haven't seen you in a long time, Josh. What's up, man? But uh, yeah. So Mario Tennis or Mar- <laughs> Mario Tennis. <laughs> Mario uh, Golf. Mario Golf. Yeah. Looks Mario right. Golf Super Rush. Me getting all the birdies or whatever the fuck the game is talking about. Uh, whatever you do in golf. Yeah, I'm about to bird. I'm um, play it as Birdo and get Pi a couple birdies. Part four, part four. Yeah. All right. Um. <laughs> so then we had Project Triangle Strategy. Now this was like the Octopath Traveler graphics looking Final Fantasy Tactics play in looking. They game. called it so. They said it's 2D or HD 2D is what yeah. they called it. Like which. I, I think most 2D games are HD as well. So it's a I don't specific really know. art style, though. Yeah. It's the Octopath Traveler, Traveler look. art style. It's a art Square style. game. It's yeah. made by Square. You know, like, mm-hmm. but my thing is, is like, what the fuck is that title? Like, I know it's not the actual title, but why even show it at this point? Like, you know. It looks tight. Dude. It looks tight, but they're just like square triangle, or what did they call it? The triangle strategy game. What, what did they call it? It's just called the triangle, or hang on. It's called triangle strategy. Project triangle strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Project triangle strategy. That'd, 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 be like, out, Brent. that'd be like if they put out Mario 64, like a trailer for it, and they were like, jumpy man game. <laughs> 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 like what? Okay, the name sucks. Okay, yeah. let's just agree. But the game itself looks kind of fun. Like it, yeah. it, it's one of those where like your decisions are gonna matter. Like you, everything you do has a consequence, and like you oh, have yeah. to like get people on your side to make them agree with you to do things. And like it looks like Fire Emblem mixed with like Octopath. I'm all about it, dude. I, it, I don't know. Yeah, it looks very Japanese. Like we're, it we're, looks like that kind of like. We're reaching uh, random anime titles now for video game titles. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> it's really long, weird. Like. Dude, it looks it looks good though. It does look good. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but there's a demo right now. I've got it downloaded. I just haven't played it yet. Yeah, so. you can play it, test it out. I know. I need. What to. else? Uh, we have Star Wars Hunters, which was announced. It's a free to play PvP Star Wars game uh, uh, developed by Zynga. The, the the people who brought you words with friends and Farmville. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. It doesn't look too promising, but it also didn't really show anything at no, all. No, th- literally nothing. They were like, "It's going to be a third person shooter mul- or multiplayer game." That's all they said, and it's coming to Switch, and I think it's going to be a uh, free to play, and yeah. it's probably going to come to phones as well. I mean, I like third person shooters, and I like Star Wars, so I'm uh, not going to like write it off completely, but no. at the same time, uh, you know. And I like Hunters. Yeah. Like reeks of mobile. Yeah, it's it very does. mobile. But isn't that weird that a mobile game may be coming to Switch? Like It wouldn't be the first time. We got Elder Scrolls Blades over true, there on true. Switch. You know? mm. I like that. I like it. 
Um, okay, we got an announcement for Fall Guys for Switch, uh, which, you know, I which don't know. Is, it was a pointless thing to show because the very next day they were like, oh, it's also coming to Xbox. Like, <laughs> I didn't realize it wasn't on Switch. Yeah. Yeah, me either. Honestly. I think it was only on PS4 for a while. No shit. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, they announced Hyrule Warriors is getting two waves of DLC. Oh, so yes. If you're a Hyrule Warriors fan. I will tell you this, though. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of the, any of the Dynasty Warriors games, really. But, like, I've been seeing so much stuff about that Dynasty Warriors Persona game that I'm going to have to get it, I It's think. not a Dynasty Warriors game. Oh, it's so not? No. Apparently, it's just, it's like Kingdom Hearts. Like, like, yeah, that's what I've read is, like, it's it plays like a Persona game. Like, the way you play yeah. it, it feels like a whole new Persona story. I don't know. No, no. They said it, it's the sequel to Persona uh, Persona five. 5. It's a sequel to it. So, uh, Fuck yeah. So, dude. it's like a full game, but there's no, instead of, like, normal RPG, it's action rpg but it's made by those people right i think the story is but it's made it's made by uh it is a muso game or whatever mm. so it is made by the people who made dynasty warriors but it's just made to be like kingdom hearts it's like if you just took away the normal fight or like rpg fighting yeah, and, and gave switched it, it with yeah okay i'm cool with that yeah. uh, I, I might have to check that out uh anyways getting back on topic we got the ninja gaiden master collection for switch uh this is kind of a cool thing yeah you know interesting for people who like those hardcore hard as nails games but are stuck with the only one dark souls game that's on switch and basically nothing else you know (laughs) here you go it's nothing (laughs) it's it's truly nothing like dark souls but it's it's just hard it's like dark souls in the sense that it's hard as fuck yeah i know but a lot of people always like like there are a lot of people. I think it's pretty associate. comparable, to be honest with you. I mean, like, there's not the se- like. Okay, the health system isn't the same. The weapon system's different. The fighting system is different. The fighting's <laughs> different, but like, it's it's got a lot of the same like vibes. Like, you you have to like grind, fight the same boss twenty times. You know, like yeah, you have to learn the mechanics of the game to play the game. You know what I mean? It's a like, difficult game. That's a, th- I think that's the closest part to it is that it's really hard and it's unforgiving. Is yeah, like that's you know, the only comparison I'd make really. But it's shit. definitely a good ass game though like yeah. all three of them right it's three of them right yeah, it's three yeah. of them uh it's uh sigma one sigma two and three so which one was black uh it was a remake of uh sigma one i think i i can't remember okay. it, yeah there's th- it, was, <laughs> it was on original xbox i think yeah. black was good ninja god and black is awesome you can play that on your your xbox one or series x right With now game pass uh yes i think so cool I okay, think. Uh, we got an announcement. I'm sorry, I don't mean to just hop no, go forward, ahead. Go but ahead. we got an announcement for Super Mario Animal Crossing items. So they're doing like a little crossover. You can get Princess Peach crowns and uh, warp pipes to put on your island and stuff. So Thanks, that's pretty Nintendo. cool. Yeah, and then <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember that 3DS game, Metopia, where it was yes. like, a, well, they're porting it to Switch. Uh, that is the weirdest shit ever. Why is that getting ported to Switch? Really weird. Uh, kind of a strange thing, but, you know, whatever. Like, I'm one not, of the like, most random it. ass things to sw- just yeah, port over. Yeah, it was kind of a random game, right? Like Yeah, and, like, Mies aren't even that big of a thing on the Switch, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, who's just like, man, I really wish I could do more with my, my Mii? Me? Yeah, yeah, like... I don't know. We don't even have a Mii Plaza anymore. Well, for those of us who are still on Wii, okay? There's probably oh, yeah. one guy who's, like, really into his me and, like, plays with him in Smash Bros. and stuff <laughs> all the time. And he's like, yes! You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got an announcement for Outer Wilds coming to Switch, which is pretty That's cool. That's cool. Now I, I might actually beat that game now because... Yeah, you can play it on Switch. It seems like a yeah. good Switch game, yeah. right? You know, take it with you everywhere and kind of, like... It would be cool if it had gyroscopic controls, like, whenever oh, you're in the ship. Yes. It would make it so much easier. They, that would be sick, actually. <coughs> um, okay, they announced two Famicom Detective games uh, for Switch. I forgot what they are. You can look it up. Yeah, they look uh, very interesting, I guess. <laughs> it looks like uh, kind of along the lines of the, uh, what's the, the lawyer game? The oh, attorney, Ace Attorney. Ace Attorney. Yeah, it's got strong Ace Attorney vibes, yeah, yeah. which I'm kind of into, actually, so. Yeah. Um, they announced Samurai Warriors 5, which I think is a Dynasty Warriors it, spinoff. Definitely. Uh, we got Legends of Mana Remastered, which is like an RPG. I think that's uh, pretty popular. Um, it looks pretty, you know. 
I used to have, uh, for some reason, I had like a, a, a CD with like one of the mana games, Secrets of Mana or something, mm. like on, like it was just the, the, the soundtrack to that game. I, I don't know why I had it, but it like, I got it. I'm sorry if you guys hear my dog barking loudly. He's, uh, he's angry. But, uh, it's how, er, it's like, um, uh, a CD that I just got from like Game Informer or something, but it was like the full album. Like I don't know why I have that or mm. had that, but anyways. I feel like I need to. We need to find this. Yeah, it it was it was cool because the disc was clear, like it was translucent, like you could see through it, oh, and then there cool. was like, uh, like leaves and stuff printed on the top of it, and then like you put it in and played like a normal CD. So hmm. that's pretty neat. Old tech, old tech, man. Man, fancy. I bet that was. Really cool back in the day. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, we got a new Monster Hunter Rise trailer. Uh, we're getting Tales from the Borderlands coming to Switch. Monster Hunter Rise looks like Monster Hunter World. Uh, like, did you see it? There, watch the trailer for it? Yeah. It looked I didn't play enough Monster Hunter World to really give an accurate comparison, to be honest with you. Well, it looks a lot better than the last Monster Hunter game that came to Switch, because the last one was made on the 3DS engine and oh ported over to Switch, and this one is, like, made in their new, like, Switch, you know, like, engine. It's made for the Switch, yeah. so it looks good. Cool. Good. Uh, you know, that's... that's. I feel like Monster Hunter needs to be on Nintendo consoles, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um... Let's see. We got Capcom Arcade Stadium, which is like a, it's like a game, but you have to buy the Capcom arcade games once you're in it. It's like a basically like a storefront. I don't know. It looks stupid. You have to buy the storefront. You have to like go into the no. Capcom <laughs> Arcade Stadium and then like buy DLC to unlock the games that are in the game. It's I, garbage. I think you get like one game with it, like like Centipede or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they yes. announced Stubbs the Zombie, which is an Xbox port, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, they announced No More Heroes 3. Which looks horrible. I'm yeah. sorry, but that game just looks bad. I've never been a big fan of the series, to be honest with you. But I also haven't really tried the series, so, you know. Yeah. I can't really say that I'm not a big fan. Um, Neon White. Uh, they announced this. It's a first-person card battler? I don't know. Yeah, looks interesting. I have no idea. They show it's like a bunch of demons hopping through heaven, shooting stuff. I don't know. It looks weird. Um, DC superhero girls teen power was announced. Yeah, yeah this I I'm so confused. Like, what is this for? Yeah, who is this for? I guess young girls. You know what I mean? Young, yeah, young, strong, brave women. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually think it's good that they're making a game targeting like younger girls. You know, I think we need more. But they can just play any other game. You know, like why do we have to make it a girls' game? Like, I mean, why not? You know, so they like, can better relate to it. Th that's fucked up. Like, they, they could just play Mario. Like everyone, we don't have a boys' game. Everybody could play this game too. True. Like, you don't I, I have guess to be a girl to play DC yeah. Superhero Whoa, Girls Team Power. Dude. <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> say. <laughs> Does it say girls scene power? It says DC Superhero Girls Teen Power. Teen you know? power. So you also have to be a teenager. This is ageist. <laughs> it's sexist. <laughs> no, just kidding. No, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It just I don't think me. it's like inherently girls only. It just it's it literally says girls. Well, they're the all girls. They're <laughs> like the girl counterparts <laughs> to their superheroes. You know, whenever you get like a like a, a thing where Batman and Superman it, like team up, they don't call it the boys team. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you know. but then again, I guess there's not like you wouldn't have to. You know, it wouldn't make sense. Then again, neither does the other one. It's like just call it what it is. It's a it's a DC team up. Like I don't know. Like call it the superheroes or like you know whoever they're supposed to be. Whoever's there. You know, I don't know. It just it, I thought it was funny whenever I saw it. I was just <laughs> like, this reminds me of like early '90s. Like we're gonna make a Barbie game. You know what I'm saying? Or like. It where, where That's what it reminds me of. It's yeah. like the Barbie games. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know. But also, like, mixed with, like, Persona or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, the deviant said making a girls only game <laughs> is so sexist. And then, <laughs> and then follows it up with, I'm a proud feminist. <laughs> Anyways. All right. uh, moving on. Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville. They announced that. It's the complete edition. You know, super, super stoked. You can play yeah, I'm some all about plant. that. Hey, you know, some people like that shit. Some people want to be plants <sighs> and kill I mean, zombies. If it's still around after 
you know, after this long, there's got to be yeah. someone still playing it. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's the sequel, right? It's, plan- it's Plants vs. Zombies 2, I think. Or is it three, no, this will be the third one. Whoa. Yeah, I'm about to say, there's several of them? Damn. Yeah, they're doing Damn. it. Um, and then they're we doing got, it. <laughs> we got Knockout City, uh, which is some kind of team-based uh, dodgeball game. And this looks so bad. Like, it looks we, pretty bad. We got to stop. All right, like, we got to stop this, all right? Everybody who's making games out there, if you're thinking about making, a like, a class-based yeah, multiplayer battle royale or like a, a anything that a hero shooter just stop it's too late you're 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 like i don't know it's like you know you're going it's, in, a, it's dodgeball bro no, yeah but you're, <laughs> you're like bidding on an ebay item that's already like gone up a hundred dollars from the you know like the initial bid like it's just a bad idea like i don't know Anyways, yeah, I like that. It's uh, a rough analogy. analogy. <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> like in my head, I'm trying to think of like what it would be like. Like, but that's what I think of. I, no, I, yeah, I'm buying you. into GameStop stock right now. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like if you bought the GameStop stock <laughs> now. <laughs> like, <laughs> going putting all your money on Bitcoin right now. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, here we go. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> Actually, today it's down. So it's down you, today. You yeah, might be. I was about to say Bitcoin is <laughs> still on the rise mm, with yeah. very few dips. It. Mm. Nah, it's it's volatile. Doge. Co- no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways. Doge coin. All right. Uh, moving on. World's End Club from the Dang and Rampa creator. Uh, actually, looks, that looks interesting. It looks interesting. I'm into that kind of thing. I've always wanted to play Danganronpa, but I, I don't have a PlayStation. I don't so. really know where to start with Danganronpa, to be honest with you. They all have weird names, and they're not like labeled like one, two, three. You know, I don't isn't it about a like bear that kills people? It's or like something? a bear, and he's like, uh, I don't know. I really don't know, but <laughs> no, I, I want to play there, it. There's like people dying. There's a bear. There's some kind of like trial that you do where you like have to like prove your innocence or something. It looks fun. Yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, we got Bravely Default 2 trailer. I think a lot of people are hyped about that. I think there's a demo, too, you guys can try on the Switch. <laughs> uh, mm. We got Saga Frontier Remastered, whatever that is. We got Ghost and Goblins Resurrection, which is a remake of Ghost and Goblins. Which nobody asked for. Right. Nobody. nobody. Ever. No, like, no one woke up and was like, dude. I really wish we had Ghosts and Goblins remade. <laughs> but anyways. Yeah. Uh, then we got an Apex Legends trailer. And they announced Hades Physical Edition. Yeah, so Apex Legends coming to Switch. Wow. It Wonderful. looks pretty good, though. I mean, you know. That's going to be real fun to be playing cross-play on your Switch against somebody <laughs> on PC. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work out perfectly whenever y- you're pulling those two frames you know, like <laughs> on the online multiplayer on Switch. But I'm sure you'll have more than two frames. You'll just be in like 240p or some shit. You know what I mean? Oh, maybe. Maybe they'll give you a solid 30 frames, dude. <laughs> I'm thinking it's a possibility. All the way back to 16-bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, it looks like an SNES game. Did you guys see the Horizon Zero Dawn running at like 42-bit or whatever they had? It was like ridiculous. No. They put it to like the lowest possible like resolution that you could, and it looked like an old school like like uh windows 98 game or something it oh, was crazy tight. like i kind of like stuff like that yeah it was cool you should check it out uh, the potato mode is yeah. what they call it yeah so uh all right we're moving on from nintendo we're jumping over to some big news from sony this is uh, from jonathan dornbush at ign it says playstation has announced the next generation of its psvr headset Uh-oh. but it won't necessarily be called playstation vr2 Uh-oh. and it won't be coming in 2021 Uh-oh. Sony confirmed that PSVR t- <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> so Sony confirmed that PSVR 2 will come to PS5 and will, quote, connect to PS5 with a single cord to simplify setup and improve okay. ease of use while enabling a high-fidelity visual experience, end quote. It's described as a next-gen VR system that enhances everything from resolution and field of view to tracking and input. No images have been released of the device. The headset will also come alongside the introduction of a new PSVR controller, seemingly replacing the PS Move wand. God, I fucking hope uh, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which will incorporate some of the key features found in the DualSense wireless controller. Oh, probably haptic triggers yep. and stuff. Cool. 
That would be that, neat yeah. VR, actually. Yeah, yeah. that would be really cool. Along with a focus on great ergonomics. Uh, however, the headset won't be available this year. There's still a lot of development underway for our new VR system, so it won't be launching in 2021, reads the blog post. But we wanted to provide this early update to our fans as the development community has started to work on creating new worlds for you to explore in virtual reality. Very cool. Uh, you know, that's exciting to me, obviously. You know, a lot of my great vr memories are with uh playstation you know so yeah. i'm excited to see them push the medium forward especially it's nice to know that oculus has a healthy competition in the uh in the lower end vr market maybe not lower end but you know like the cheaper uh, yeah. the cheaper entry market you I know mean, that's I mean? still a pretty big barrier uh, like uh barrier of entry well though, yeah with a ps5 you still have to have a PS, stuff, yeah, you know, you but a lot of people PS5. are already gonna have a ps5 like this is like you know we're thinking i'm thinking like you know a year or two year from now yeah. a year and a half from year now two years it'll be a little sure. more common you know yeah so uh, the official oculus twitter i posted this on uh, facebook they, <laughs> they retweeted it and they were like welcome back player two <laughs> like just straight up like dunking on them dude that's good though man yeah I, 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 this is good a healthy this is competition all healthy for the competition i think uh i'll you know i'd be surprised if playstation doesn't start shelling out money we're gonna start seeing i bet we see resident evil in vr i bet we see upgraded hitman in vr i bet we see yeah. like uh, better see upgraded I'll be yeah, su- right. what i'll be surprised if we don't see is half-life because like this is uh valve's chance to make a second burst of money off of half-life alex you know what i mean oh, yeah I'm but sure they own important. their own headsets wouldn't they want it um, i think they're trying to push the medium as far as they can you know yeah. i think right now it's it's you can't think like that if if you're a VR manufacturer, like a headset man, you just well, want but that that statement doesn't really hold either because it's on play, Oculus. You can play it on any. You can play yeah. Half Life on any on through uh, Steam. I mean, obviously, it's going to be the any best headset. on oh. uh, on. But you Steam know. is is Valve's thing. Yeah, no. yeah. But, but also, Valve has been pretty generous about putting their previous games on other consoles too. Like we've got Left 4 Dead and all the other Half Life games, or Orange Box, all that shit yeah. made its way to consoles. So it's not like they've just like uh, you know. You know, we got to sell everything off of our platform, or you know, they've always been pretty good about that kind of thing. <laughs> true, true, true. Uh, Brent, what you got? Oh man, uh, Sony's Twisted Metal video game series is headed to TV. Sony Pictures Television is developing a new TV series based on the PlayStation game with Deadpool and Zombie Land writers Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick signing as the mm. producers. Uh, the TV show is a joint production between Sony Pictures TV and PlayStation Productions, which is new the new in-house studio responsible for bringing PlayStation franchises to the screen. Uh, Cobra Kai writer and producer Michael Jonathan Smith is signed on to write and produce the Twisted Metal series, while Reese and Warnick will be executive producers. <coughs> will Arnett is signed to be an executive producer as well. It was rumored recently that Arnett will be vo- will be the voice actor for Sweet Tooth. But what? Variety said that there is no deal in place for this right now. Who? In Will Arnett, the guy, he's from uh, like a bunch of shit. He's like he's a, a lot of hot rod as yeah. like the douchebag boyfriend. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, Batman in the Lego Batman movies. Uh, <laughs> er, 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 in l- just Lego movies in general. He's a, if you saw him, you'd know him from something. He's I know his voice. From what you, yeah, yeah, from what you just told me. Have you voice. seen that show like on, I think it's on Hulu. No, no, no. It might be on Prime, but it's like a Lego builder show where like people come on and they gotta like build like certain Lego things. No, I didn't know. It was I didn't like know a, there was such a thing. Yeah, it's kind of like British Bake Off, but with Legos. <laughs> but like, yeah, that's uh, what I'm talking about. Forget all the food. I yeah, want to see some Legos. It's tight, but he's like uh, the the host of the show on there. Mm. That's cool. Anyways, did yeah. did Sweet Tooth ever even talk in the? I don't remember him ever even talking in the. Any of the games. I don't remember I don't any remember. story at all from any of those games. So I this is going like to be the interesting. very beginning of the game where there's like a cut scene and one of them is like busting out of jail or something and they're like riding to the fight. You know, I don't know. I don't remember much story wise <laughs> either. <laughs> all right. So uh, <laughs> next up, Xbox is reportedly putting on a Bethesda showcase next month in March. Uh, so the claim comes from Games Beat journalist Jeff Grubb, who said as much in the Games Beat di- uh decides podcast over the past weekend quote i don't know if it will be a full direct style event but they will make note about it and they will talk about it extensively explain what it means for everybody and talk about the immediate future of both companies becoming one Mm. grub said of the unannounced events so yeah expect that to happen sometime in mid-march so that's pretty interesting um mid-march eh probably won't be 
I, honestly, I don't know. I don't. I don't expect too much in the the terms of like crazy announcements or anything. I don't, I don't think announcements. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I think what's going to happen is they're going to explain like the exclusivity stuff. Yeah. Like, they're going to be like, yo, so, all right, uh, you know, this game will be exclusive. These types of games will be exclusive to Xbox. These won't, or they'll oh, be yeah. timed, timed or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. just explain yeah, it everybody to the was world. F- losing their shit over are they going to go exclusive? Are they going to yeah. be timed? This and that. Yeah. Are they just going to let things go as it is? I think those of us with Game Pass, though, probably shouldn't get too excited about like new announced no. games and stuff, you know? Yeah. Anyways. Uh, anyways, let's see. Burr, burr, burr. Back in 2019, a class action lawsuit targeted Epic Games over its randomized loot llamas in Fortnite Save the World and loot crates in Rocket League. Now, a settlement will see Epic Games awarding 1,000 free V-Bucks or Rocket League credits to all players who purchased an offending loot box. Uh, the bonus will be paid out automatically and will be applied worldwide despite the class action only technically covering players in the U.S. Uh, a thousand V-Bucks? Yeah, so you get a thousand <laughs> V-Bucks. And really, that's not so bad because, like, I think most people who bought this random loot box kind of knew what they were getting themselves into, you know? So yeah. now you're just getting a free thousand V bucks, you know? So that's pretty cool, I guess. True. <clears throat> True. True. So uh following Horizon Zero Dawn's <laughs> PC release, uh more PS4 exclusives will be making their way to PC. Sony has now confirmed that Days Gone is coming to PC in spring. So oh. if you wanted to play that and uh you know uh and didn't have a PlayStation, you can do that. That's uh, pretty cool. <laughs> I did I actually did want to play that. I just never did. I yeah. what I want though is Ghost of Tsushima on PC. Yes. And I also want uh God of War on PC. Bloodborne. I, oh and Bloodborne. Boy. Yeah. Bloodborne Dude, PC would all be those dope. would be sick on PC. Just but I think we're taking steps in the right direction, you know. Yeah, yeah. What you got? Um, EA Sports' newest Madden game, Madden NFL 21, is being added to EA Play very soon. Uh, The publisher has confirmed that the professional American football game will join the subscription service on March 2nd. This includes the version of EA Play bundled with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So, if you're a football fan, uh, get hyped because the newest and best football game is coming to you. The only football game. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> There's <laughs> lots of football games. Oh, well, they we're talking about um, NCAA coming back. Yeah, oh, yeah we yeah. talked about that yeah, last. Yeah, yeah, yeah that or episode before last. I'm so excited for new sports ball. But <laughs> no, uh, Gr- Gran Turismo <laughs> Seven has been delayed into 2022. In a statement to GQ, a Sony spokesperson wrote, "GT Seven has been impacted by COVID-related production challenges, and therefore will shift from 2021 to 2022." With the ongoing pandemic, it's a dynamic and changing situation, and some critical aspects of game production have been slowed over the past several months. We'll share more specifics on GT7's release date when available. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's very, very sad. The sports car game. There are some <laughs> fanatics behind it, though. There are. Yeah, there are some serious. Like bigger than Forza. Gran Turismo. But I'll have my sports ball to <laughs> hold me over. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, Uh, More legal battles going on over here. Illegal Uh, battles. (laughs) As part of the ongoing legal battle between Apple and Epic Games, which may be heading to trial this year, a new filing has disclosed that Apple subpoenaed Valve software back in November. The subpoena demanded that Valve provide multiple years' worth of commercial data about Steam operations and sales. Apple's reasoning for the subpoena was basically that since its case is built around competitive practices, this data from Steam would be key to demonstrating the company's points. <coughs> Apple argue, or Apple's argument is being handled by a law firm of McDermott, Will, and Lowry, and states that the data from Valve is relevant to its case against Epic because Valve's digital distribution service Steam is the dominant digital game distributor on PC platform and is a direct competitor to the Epic Game Store. (laughs) There are two requests within the subpoena in particular that have been causing tension between Valve and Apple. According to a joint discovery letter that was submitted to the Northern California District Court yesterday, (laughs) Apple and Valve have engaged in several meet and confers, but Valve has refused to produce information Responsive to request 2 and 32. (laughs) Request 2 asks for a large amount of information from Valve 
Uh, Apple's request to is very narrow. It simply requests documents sufficient to show Valve's A, total yearly sales of apps and in-app products, B, annual advertising revenues from Steam, and C, annual, still, or annual sales of external <coughs> products attributable to Steam, D, annual revenues from Steam, and E, annual earnings, whether gross or net, from Steam. <laughs> Apple has gone so as far as requesting this information in any readable, readily accessible format, but Valve redu refuses to produce it. Uh, request 32 follows suit, asking for A, the name of each app on Steam, the date uh, range when the app was available on Steam, <laughs> which is shitloads of shit. Like, there's like thousands and thousands of games on Steam. The price of the app and any other in-app product available on Steam. The goal for these requests is to demonstrate the extent of the market that Epic is competing in and show how much its main competitor Valve charges and makes for the products on its storefront. <laughs> Valve, meanwhile has pushed back, stating that it believes it has cooperated enough. <coughs> Valve already produced documents regarding its revenue share, competition with Epic, Steam distribution contacts, and other documents. Furthermore, Valve has argued that it shouldn't be involved in the case at all, as <coughs> it's not a competitor in the mobile space. <coughs> somehow, a dispute over mobile apps, uh, somehow in a dispute over mobile apps, a maker of PC games that does not compete in the mobile market or sell apps is being portrayed as a key figure. It's not. The extensive and highly confidential information that Apple demands about a subset of the PC games available on Steam does not show the size or parameters of the relevant market and would be massively burdensome to pull together. <laughs> Apple's demands for further production should be rejected. So basically, Apple's just trying to be like, oh, give us all your information, Steam, because we need it to like better our case against Epic. And Steam's like, nah, dude, like that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> You gonna pay us for it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Jordan Alleman at IGN says Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines 2 has been delayed out of 2021, with developer Hardsuit Labs no longer leading the game's development. The news was revealed in publisher Paradox Interactive's 2020 year-end report. Paradox revealed it has quote started a collaboration with a new studio partner to finish work on the game end quote. In a statement issued by the Bloodlines 2 Twitter account, Paradox said that in order to meet its ambition for the game, the publisher came to the conclusion that a change is needed and as a result, more development time is required. Paradox thanked Hardsuit Labs for its hard work on the game so far. Uh, but the, the year-end report indicates that the studio will finish work on the game, meaning this doesn't seem to be a full restart for development. Bloodlines 2 was initially pegged to launch in Q1 2020, but was postponed into later in the year before being officially delayed into 2021 in August of 2020. This was just the start of the game's development troubles. Uh, the, it, it's a long history here. This is not good. What's up, Paranormal? Uh, welcome to episode 205. Yeah, but. this is bad news, man. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of the original game, but you were I, super stoked. For I this. was super stoked for this, and <laughs> but I also know that the original game came out and it was basically unplayable because of development issues, and they had to like patch it. You know, like basically they had to mod it to work. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm not. I wasn't expecting it to like be without any bumps in the road or it's anything. You know, these guys sounds have familiar. A, sounds yeah. like another <laughs> game that just came out that hey. was highly anticipated. Hey, <laughs> and it was a fun game though. You know, but I wouldn't call this bumps in the road. I mean, this has been delayed multiple times now. Yeah, you know, and then they just got rid of a studio, the head studio that was working on it, the lead studio. I think it will still come out eventually. But yeah. not anytime soon. Yeah, it'll be like, like 2024, and yeah. they'll be like, hey, remember this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm predicting 2023. What year did the first one come out? Oh, gosh. 2007 or something. No, I'm just kidding. 2008, something like that. Yeah. It was around that era of games. It's older. It's a lot older. Uh, Brent, what you, what you got over there? Okay. The real news. The real news. It seems rapper Soldier Boy <laughs> is getting back into console manufacturing after yes. his first attempt failed when he was hit with a cease and desist letter. You can't hold him down. You can't hold him down. See, uh, I thought <laughs> I thought Nintendo sued him over the first one. He claims they didn't. He claims okay. that they never sued him. I'm still. They probably I'm were still threatening to just sue as him. awestruck as to how he still has the funds to do this again. Hey, Soldier Boy is like rich as hell. He did that one deal with. Uh, Nike or Apple or something and made like millions at one point. Like, he, it was like Dr. Dre status kind of deal. Like I still think that I made the greatest comment 
for this. I've I've created the ultimate name for his new console. What's the new console? It's the Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we need. So did, like, did you see the console? Uh, no. Oh one? yeah, it looks like a plastic piece of shit. That like it looks like a a, a fake Xbox One S <laughs> made out of like hard plastic. It's like a PlayStation Two controller coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, was that an actual picture? I didn't. Yes, I didn't think that was an actual. Picture. I don't know. I think it, it might was. not be the actual. I don't know. Either I way, it was just like some stock photo of some piece of shit. He claims he's building a new console from scratch. And oh, okay, maybe feature, that's not it. It'll feature all new games and all new deals. What does all new games mean? I don't know. What the fuck does that know. mean? Maybe it means that no real developer is gonna develop a game for this game. Dude. Maybe <laughs> Soldier hey. Boy's got his own. Maybe he's like maybe he's hey. into code, dude. This is the perfect time. <laughs> For Kanye to put out his game about his mom, oh, like this would go. be perfect. Like this it, is it on the Soldier Boy. It's gonna be console. the exclusive title, the launch title. <laughs> I would, I would fucking die, if <laughs> dude. I'd buy one. <laughs> He's a dead ass. If he takes it seriously, he could probably do That's something. That's what I'm in the saying. Market. If he really tried and got with the right people and just put his money in the right places, like you know, he could probably. All I know is if he doesn't call it that, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> what, what else is he going to call it? You don't just make a console. He said, dude, I've been waiting for that Kanye game. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If, if he, that's if what I'm saying. He's got a fan base already. What if he went and got like every like legit rapper to get to design a game, the new Def Jam game. I was he's just about to yes. say, he's yeah. been calling for Def <laughs> oh, Jam, dude. dude. If he had the exclusive oh, Def Jam man. game, oh, uh, I, I would know. buy a Soldier console to play Def Jam. <laughs> 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 you know, Damn. I like it. I like it. Okay, uh, so Jordan Alleman at IGN says EA has patented technology that seeks to let players stream and play full games before they've been downloaded. As spotted by Game Rant, the patent can be found on the United States Patent and Trademark Office, where you can see a diagram of the system in action. The plan involves the dynamic creation or the creation of a dynamic video game client that provides a stream of the game to players from a remote uh, simulation engine upon request. The dynamic video game client can utilize a state stream game engine in combination with a game application streaming service to provide users with the ability to begin playing games quickly on a huge range of devices. And so basically, the EA basically is trying X -Cloud. to... No. Uh, so, like, uh, kind of. Like, it's like you, you're you still going to get the game and download it to your system, but you'll be able to play it instantly while it's downloading. That's cool. I'm yeah, cool with that. Without affecting too much. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, that's nice. Yeah. So that might be a thing in the future, so we'll see. I think it'd be better if you could, like, play, like, five, ten minutes of the game and, like, just see if it's a game you even want to buy, like, with the streaming. You it's know called I mean? a demo. I was just about to say, yeah, there's like these things demo. that we used to have called yeah. demos. <laughs> but, like, a fast demo where you don't have to download the whole demo. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah Demos yeah. really fell off. Well, because, yeah. I mean. I, honestly, though, Brent's. I think Brent's on to something. That would be a fantastic platform for saying. demos. Speedy demos. Or yeah, you know yeah what that would be really, really good, actually. What if you could just pay like like seven bucks and like you get the game, you get access to the stream of the game for like three or four days or something, like an actual like a rental? rental, a rental. Yeah, mm. online rental. That See, that's what, how you could do online dude, rentals. That's, that's what Stadia should have done. <laughs> dude, uh, that's what Stadia should have done. Like, like you could pay the subscription and you'd have access to all of it all the time. Dude, Stadia should have just thought about this a little bit. You know, that would have been a great idea. Uh, well, you still have to buy their. Was it a, just a, con a con You don't like have to buy anything from Stadia. No? Like, yeah, I thought you had to have their controller. No, you don't. You oh, can play no, with an Xbox pro. controller. Yeah, but that would be tight. Yeah. Um, okay. I got one here, and remember this name, guys, because we're going to be talking about this guy a lot today. Uh, veteran game developer Peter Molinox. I don't know how to say his last name, but he's really going to be thinking about that. <laughs> we're going to be talking about this a lot. So, Mol Molly Molly Molino. 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 You're uh, that, uh, yeah, Peter uh, Molino, the no, Fable uh, guy. You know, I'm it's talking. Molino. Uh, damn it, it's Peter Molino. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, veteran game developer Peter Molyneux, UK Molyneux's UK studio 22 Cans, has undergone a round of layoffs. Multiple employees were let go in the move, but the precise number of cuts was not made public. A spokesperson confirmed to GI.biz that the layoffs at the Fable Designer studio 
were due to a variety of reasons. Uh, unfortunately, due to a number of factors, including projects reaching a certain stage in their development, we can confirm that a number of roles at 22 Cans have been made redundant, the statement said. Uh, development at the studio is continuing, however. Yeah, 22 Cans has been under a lot of heat for a long time. P- Peter Molyneux has been out, like, basically he was interviewed at one point, and they, like, I think it was by, like, uh... Here, save it. We're going to talk about him later. Oh, are we? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, my bad. I didn't realize. No, okay. it's okay. So uh, Joe Scrubbles at IGN says, Google, id Software, and Bungie are the subject of a class action lawsuit that claims the companies misled customers by saying Stadia games could play could be played at a 4K resolution. Reported, they did say that. The, yeah, reported by classaction.org, the lawsuit was filed last year in Queens County Superior Court, but has now been transferred to a New York federal court. The lawsuit, brought by plaintiff Jacqueline Shepard, centers around claims by Google a- ahead of Stadia's release that the streaming platform would be, quote, more powerful than both Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro combined. Yeah, it said that. The, yep, particularly <laughs> in its ability to stream <laughs> games at 4K resolution. However, upon launch, it became clear that ma- many Stadia games weren't pushing a true 4K image, but upscaling from lower resolutions. Uh-oh. By allowing pre-orders before launch and not offering full information about the platform's ability to push 4K, the plaintiff alleges that Google made false and misleading claims concerning the streaming quality of Stadia's service in order to generate increased revenue for the Google Stadia division. Oof. Some of that old <coughs> false advertising. Sounds like she's got a case. <laughs> she's got a case. The plaintiff includes <laughs> id Software and Bungie in the suit because of their advertising for Doom Eternal and Destiny 2 on Stadia, which included mentions of 4K resolutions, but neither game ran at true 4K upon mm. release. Uh, the plaintiff alleges that id, in particular, wrongly generated millions of dollars in revenue as a result of those claims. Id has denied any liability or wrongdoing, <laughs> of course. The plaintiff is seeking <laughs> financial compensation for a number of different factors as well as an order that forces Google to display the true resolution and frame rate of every game sold on Stadia. Hell yeah. I'll tell you what's actually going to happen here. She's going to get that money. Uh, a bunch of people are going to get money, and Google's going to shutter Stadia <laughs> because they're not going to They're gonna be like, yeah, fuck all this. Like, We don't want none of this. That's real. This yeah. has turned into a fucking mess with yeah. Stadia. <laughs> Jesus. Is, uh, but... but we saw it coming. Oh, yeah. Like, a long time oh, ago. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the moment they mentioned Stadia. No, actually, if you go back and listen to our very first episode where they announced Stadia, we were both sucking Stadia's dick. Were dude. we? Yeah, we were both like, this is the future, dog. This is going to be crazy. It's more powerful than the Xbox and the PlayStation. Well, because they told us it was going to be. We were hyped. <laughs> we were I like. Was, I was never <laughs> hyped about streaming a game. <laughs> the hype died fast. Or stream, Let's stream just say playing. that. Yeah, but I think once xCloud became a thing, I was like, nah, xCloud. I feel like I've always been for xCloud. xCloud, yeah. I I still... I I'm really, still I about xCloud. I'm, I saw a thing uh, previewing what it's going to look like when they launch the like browser version of xCloud. I'm really hyped to be able to do it on my computer. You know. Oh, I mean? yeah. That'll be cool. Um. Okay. We got Square Enix is bringing the Kingdom Hearts series to PC in March exclusively via the Epic Game Store. Uh, As announced during a recent Epic Game Store Spring Showcase, the entire RPG series will hit Epic's digital storefront next month, making this the first time that it will be available on the platform. Uh, Starting March 30th, following the er, the following Kingdom Hearts games will or sorry, yeah, March 30th is when it is. Oh boy, cool. I mean, hey, you know, a lot of people like Kingdom Hearts, and a lot of people have recently converted to PC and don't have a way to play the whole series right now. So, you know, yeah. So, uh, Rare's canceled N64 game known as Dinosaur Planet, which ended up being repurposed into GameCube's Star Fox Adventures, has leaked online and is fully playable. Oh, I knew you'd be about this. Yeah, dude, I'm all about it. I've been <laughs> playing it. Forced of Illusion on Twitter released the files to Dinosaur Planet and shared some screenshots of the game that featured Star Fox's Fox McCloud. Furthermore, while this version of Dinosaur Planet will not currently run 100% perfectly on any emulator, Forced of Illusion states it will work perfectly fine with Flash Card. Uh, Forest of Illusion purchased a disc from a private game collector in Sweden that had a build of Dinosaur Planet on it from December 1st, 2000. Wow. It is said to be a late build of the game and that it would need some hacking to be fully playable to the end. Uh, Dinosaur Planet, as previously mentioned, became Star Fox Adventures and was released in 2002. Uh, basically, um, what happened is uh, Shigeru Miyamoto was like, 
why are you guys why, or like saw what Rare was making and was like, you guys should just put Fox on this. Like, just make this a, fo uh, a Star Fox game. And that's why it was so weird. It was a oh, launch weird, title yeah, for yeah. the GameCube. Yeah, or not a launch title, but it was like right around the beginning, I feel like. I do remember playing. That's the one where you could get in and out of the vehicles, right? No, that's Assault. That's oh, Star Fox Assault. I was going to say, I had a lot of fun with that one. No, so Star Fox Adventures is the one where he has like a staff. Oh, and yeah, And he's like yeah. running around like fighting. I remember fighting. that one too. That was weird. Yeah, it was like Zelda with Star Fox. So like the, the game, a lot of the mechanics are based around like Zelda mechanics. Like, you know, like solving puzzles and like uh, even the fighting with like the lock-on camera and like all that stuff but uh it's very very awesome like and i don't know why they they fucked it up by making it a star fox game but this game would have been perfect without it you know like uh it's an interesting story it's a lot more adult oriented like it's got that rare tinge to it where it's like oh you know they're they're kind of mature about it mm -hmm. but then like once star fox was thrown into it, it became like a kid friendly <laughs> like stupid wait so in the version you're playing is it still star fox as the main character no yeah i mean it, even in the the one with star fox crystal's still one of the main characters but you play as this girl named crystal and like it, you're on like a dinosaur planet and like you're trying to stop it from being uh taken over by this like fucking dude named scales and like <laughs> But it's actually really good, and the it's pretty crazy because like playing it on the uh, the N sixty four version of it, like you start off and you like you get on this ship and like you you're trying to save this princess or whatever, and so this like little bird is the princess and like you're talking to her and all this stuff. But if you play Star the Star Fox Adventures. That bird is just a random bird. Like they completely cut out the whole story. With oh the, wow! With so the, the bird's just irrelevant in the. Yeah, it's just like it, you just walk up to it and it teaches you how to press A or like to talk to things. Huh. And like it's very strange how it's just like completely like went separate. Like, wow! You know, like I want to watch some like side by side like comparison videos and stuff. Oh That's yeah, really interesting. It's pretty cool. Anyways, but yeah. So if you guys want to know more about that. My next uh, canceled video games uh, video that's going up on YouTube is going to be uh, it's going to have that game in it with footage Sweet. and everything. So that's really cool. Very neat. Very neat. All right. Uh, after years of development, Joseph Ferris Hazelight Studios has completed its work on its next co-op game. It takes two. Yeah. Uh, Ferris made the announcement on Twitter saying we finally did it. It takes two has gone gold. Uh, publisher Electronics Arts responded to Ferris' tweet with a humorous animated gif of Michael Scott from The Office. No! <laughs> <laughs> Is it that one? <laughs> it's the one where he's like... Oh, I thought it was the... No! <laughs> no! Oh, God, please, no! <laughs> uh, I'm excited. This is that, like feel good couples game right i don't know yeah about a while. Yeah, yeah yeah i don't know how feel good it's gonna actually be in practice though i, I feel yeah. like uh, a way out was pr got a little dark halfway through but i like joseph ferris i liked brothers uh a tale of two brothers or whatever i like the way out so i have high hopes for this next game you know <laughs> for sure i just hope i can find somebody to play with <laughs> yeah. So uh, Blizzard Entertainment and Vicarious Visions, the former Activision Blizzard subsidiary that was recently folded into Blizzard proper, the ones who made uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater uh -huh. remake, uh, have announced Diablo 2 Resurrected, the long rumored remaster of the 2000 action RPG classic. It's due out in 2021 for PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Uh, Resurrected will include all of the content from the Lord of Destruction expansion pack, including the Assassin and Druid player classes. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. Only remake I need is Mass Effect, god dang it. Yep. All right. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2 might not be getting any uh, story DLC, but some new single-player missions are now available in its multiplayer mode, Red Dead Online. <laughs> Uh, three yeah, more <laughs> surprise. Three more solo play missions have been added to Red Dead Online. Blah blah blah. You get the point. But basically, they got some solo story stuff on Red Dead Online. So, and you can get that for five bucks on Steam right now. So, check it out. Yeah, I feel like GTA Six isn't gonna have any single player. I feel like it's just gonna be an online, online. game. That's you know, gonna suck. That would suck ass. Yeah, that would suck ass. <laughs> you know, that would <laughs> suck ass. <laughs> I was trying to find the bright side, but there's not one. I don't think they would. No, nah, they wouldn't no. do that. They, no. They'd have to do a dope story. Well, dude, they're, Rockstar is legendary for their stories in their GTA. Yeah, yeah but Red the Dead. guy who writes all those stories left. They're not mm. just going to stop doing dope stories because the writer left. They're like, making a shit ton of money off of the online stuff. They're going to still do the online stuff. Like We'll see. 
GTA 6 is going to have a dope ass I'm going to need you to not speak this into existence, Jamal. Like, right? And just let GTA... I'm telling you Remember right this now. one because uh, this is going to be a thing. We're going to be talking about this later, and then I'm going to be like, I could have swore I said this was going to happen, and everyone's going to be like, no, nah, we were all about it. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. Grand no. Theft Auto 6 no. will have a dope story. That's just... R- it might flat. have a dope story, but it's going to be online. Well, yeah, they're going to have an online mode. No, like I'm every, saying there's not going to be, like, an option. It's not going to be fully online. That would be stupid because then you couldn't just, like, enjoy the story. Yeah, you'd, like, get, you'd get griefed while you're trying to do yeah, a fucking mission. Like, you can't just have some eight-year-old dusting you while you're trying to, like, talk to Lester. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> As funny as that sounds, I'm still going to say this. It's gonna be online only. Let's let's uh, we'll duke it out when it happens. If 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 it doesn't come out to online only, then I'll 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 be like, all right, you you guys are right. <laughs> but I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna stick to that right now. Okay. Or Jamal's gonna turn the tables and he's gonna be like, what? Well, no, I totally is gonna have a story. <laughs> no, nah, uh, we'll remember this episode. Okay. Okay. I just imprinted it. Five years in, later, in my when GTA Six comes yeah, out. <laughs> Twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> remember back on episode two hundred and five. No, uh, so Wesley LeBlanc at IGN says multiple Silent Hill projects could be in the works at third-party developers, according to speculation stirred by comments from the Medium developer Bloober team, oh, as God. well as a report from Video Game Chronicles or Video Games Chronicle. In an interview with GameIndustry.biz, Bloober Team said it's working on quote a quote unquote another horror IP with a quote unquote very famous publisher. Uh, fans have started to speculate by putting the two bits of news together that Bloober Team might be working on a Silent Hill project. Quote, we've been working for more than a year on another game project, another horror IP, and we're doing this with a very famous gaming publisher. Bloober Team CEO Piotr uh, Babiano uh, told GameIndustry.biz, I can't tell you who. I can't tell you what the project is, but I'm pretty sure when people realize what we're working, uh, or realize we're working on it, they will be very excited. No. Bro, I honestly... Wasn't I sw- Medium like y'all's favorite game or something? <laughs> <laughs> we well, love the Medium. No, like, I honestly, w- I will kill everybody if they put Bloober <laughs> Team in charge. <laughs> honestly, it's such I, I a saw bad in, idea. in the same article, they were talking about how they tried to give it to uh, fucking um, the Until Dawn people, too. The Supermassive. Uh, don't give it to them, either. Don't give it to them, either. Like, I'm give sorry. Give it to Kojima. Give it to Red Barrel. I games. was just about to say, give yes, it to Red fucking Barrel. the Outlast people. Red dude. Barrel would be we need really some fucking good real scary shit, dude. You know what I mean? What I'm are not you talking that. about, dude? The medium was so scary. <laughs> 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 so good, dude. Critically acclaimed, bro. Like, <laughs> it got so many good reviews. And, uh, At least uh, there's two. <laughs> At least they're like, oh, the one of them might be Bloober Team. I hope Bloober one's Team gonna puts be like out a, a mobile shitty game. one and, one, and like, <laughs> they put out a real one, too. The, 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 so the. Uh, while we're on the subject of Silent Hill and like Kojima today, uh, there was like a stream that Phil Spencer did. And behind him was a like an action figure of uh, from Kojima Productions. So like mm. uh, so people are thinking that there might be a little uh, a, a little, little crossover pop uh, popping off. Maybe some, he maybe he's going to make an Xbox game. So we'll see. We'll I see wouldn't be it. surprised. Or maybe they'll announce like Death Stranding for Xbox or something. I wouldn't be surprised about that, that either. That would suck ass. I hope that's not what it is. Um, I hope he's like, I s- honestly we're going to do PT su- for Xbox. What if they bought, uh, what if they were like, we just want you to make Silent Hills for Xbox? Bro, honestly, I would fucking come like <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <instant>. just instantly. <laughs> like, I. <laughs> PT might be the scariest game I've ever played, and it's like just a fucking short ass demo. Demo, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, uh, I'm not gonna read this whole article, but Ubisoft has confirmed that it's gonna be changing the name of Rainbow Six Quarantine. Uh, right now, the placeholder name is Rainbow Six Parasite, but they have confirmed also that that will not be the final name. So why? I don't know. They oh, just the quarantine thing people. is the quarantine thing. I guess they figure people have had enough of quarantine. You know what I mean? So yeah. they're like, maybe we should get something a little more appealing. You know what I mean? I don't know. Dumb. Uh, they should have just <laughs> went with what they had. Hey, I like quarantine. I was That's what I'm saying. They should have kept it. What's I, the, what's it might, I, I might have been more popular because of the relevance of everybody being yeah. in quarantine. Anyways. Yeah. 
quarantine. Quarantine. Uh, so Adam Bakehurst at IGN says G4 has announced that Adam Sessler and Kevin Pereira or Kevin Pereira are officially returning to G4 and will be hosting the revivals of X Play and Attack of the Show, Fuck respectively. Yeah, dude. While G4 recently confirmed that X-Play and Attack of the Show would be returning, this is the first official confirmation of Sessler and Pereira rejoining the network. Sessler has been a huge part of G4's uh, relaunch, beginning with its first teaser from last year. Since then, he has brought back Crazy Adam to launch G4 Needs, or hashtag G4 Needs Talent and Ebenezer or Ebenezer Sess during the holidays. He even did a game review for Cyberpunk 2077. I need to see that. I didn't see that. Right. In the new version of X-Play, Sussler will review games while inviting guests from across gaming to talk about the industry at large. Ke- Kevin Pere- Pereira, or Colonel Duck Buckets, is also <laughs> making his return to <laughs> Attack of the Show, in which he was an original cast member. G4 also teased that there is, quote, no word from his former co-host, though. Uh, in quote, one of Pereira's co-hosts, Olivia Munn, was reportedly in talks to return to G4 back in August 2020. Yeah, she did the reunion show, right? Like, did, I don't know. Did you, oh, you got to go watch it if you ever get bored. They had Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb and Olivia Munn and that guy. Um, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, yeah, and they all did the reunion thing together. It, it yeah. says, uh, alongside Adam Sessler and Cre- Kevin Pere- Pereira's return, it was also announced that... O- O Ovili May and uh Froskerin will be the first two on air cast members for G4's official state uh, slate of esports programming. Last week these two made their debut with the Bleep Esports show for the B4 G4 beta campaign. Okay. See, I never really watched Attack of the Show, to be honest with you. Me but either. I was a huge uh, X Play fan, so I'm excited mm-hmm. to see X Play come back. Yeah, extended yeah. play. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited to see good. Adam Sessler review games again. You know, they need to bring back like that show uh, where they they would have like uh, tournaments with SOCOM. <laughs> what was that game, that show oh, called? I don't remember that. Where they, no. it was just like a multiplayer. Like uh, they just had a bunch of people sitting in there. It was basically esports before esports. You don't remember that? Nah. It was cool. It was well, cool to watch. Well, I mean, now, they, now they got esports. Yeah, now yeah they but got I, I just <laughs> I just want them to lock them in a room with a bunch of like old PCs and make them play SoCal. A land, a land oh, that would tournament. Be sick. They just have like a land. A tournament. La- yeah, a land Get, tournament like, the was best so pros calm. and make them all play on like Windows ninety eight PCs. Doom. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, here's another one. I won't read the whole thing on, but Metro Exodus is getting like a super enhancement. Uh, it's going to be for the Xbox Series X and S and PS5 and the PC. Um, and if you have it on PC, it's going to be like a free update. So basically they're like, like doing an overhaul on all the ray tracing, uh, and they're implementing DLSS 2.0 and a bunch of other cool things. So, uh, one of the best looking games out right now is about to get a whole, whole lot better looking. So, pretty exciting. <coughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> 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 my PC can't run it. So I don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lionsgate has announced that Jack Black has been cast as Claptrap in the upcoming Borderlands live <laughs> action movie. Oh, God. Black will provide voice acting for the Yellow Robot, which has long been seen as the mascot of the Borderlands series. Quote, I am so excited to reunite with Jack, this time in the recording booth, said Eli Roth, director of Borderlands. Wait, Cla- when was Jack Black and Eli Roth together? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Clap- <laughs> Clap- <laughs> Claptrap is the funniest character in the game, and Jack is perfect to bring him to the big screen. I can see that actually being kind of funny. I just, like, I don't know how they're going to do it. Obviously, like, maybe have Jack Black record something and then take the tone of it up, like, eight octaves or some shit they know? might not even do that they might just let it be jack black you know with a funny voice like i i could see ah, that happening. but that's part of claptrap's thing is like it's got to be really high pitch and annoying Th- this yeah? was the perfect oh. time to bring back the voice actor from gur like oh my god gur would have been the perfect li- so to answer y'all's question on what they did before uh it was the house with a clock in its walls oh that, that happened recently i heard that was horrible yeah i don't know if i saw that one i've uh, yeah, I've never Eli Roth sucks, man. I'm sorry, but like he's like the shitty Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, like, he kind of get. In my opinion, most of Eli Roth's stuff it just gets recognition because of the shock factor. You know, like yeah. he's, he's kind of like one of those shock artists. 
but it's like not shocking because it's so over the top that it's not even scary. It's like it's so over the top it looks fake as fuck. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like the more recent stuff, like hostile hostile when I was a kid, yeah. But now, like watching anything he's made since then, like the Green, whatever it's called, the Green Miles. Well, even something. before Hostel, like Cabin Fever and stuff. It's, yeah, it's all just kind of like, eh. it's like, oh yeah, fake blood. <laughs> like, you ever get bored of that shit, man? He's like, nah. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, this time we're eating shit. <laughs> 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 like, who, who let this guy in here? <laughs> Anyways. What you got? Okay. Uh, D-Brand, mostly known for its skins and cases for mobile devices, has launched its own version of the matte black side palettes. Excuse me, I can't read today. For the PlayStation 5. I'm going so far as to dare Sony to sue them over it. Because <laughs> 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 they, they got taken down last yeah, time. They don't get, well, this is a different company. I thought uh, it was the same one. No, nah, this is like a, a new company, and they don't give a fuck. Uh, unlike other companies that have canceled plans, it seems convinced that it has an ironclad case. Only time will tell if that's true. Since launch, fans of the PS5 have been clamoring for replacement side panels, especially after a teardown of the console revealed how easy it was to pop the side panels off. Since then, some companies have tried, but Sony has intervened, perhaps hoping to supply its own version sometime in the future. Uh, D brand, <laughs> well, but of course, uh. D brand is probably the most recognizable brand to try its hand at this, uh, though, and it's already selling like hotcakes. D brand doesn't shy away from challenging Sony to stop the sale of its products, even going so far as to etching its own patterns into the side plates to mimic the thousands of PlayStation <laughs> symbols present on Sony's white ones. Yeah, the company yeah, seems confident that this product <laughs> will ship when promised, with the first batch arriving this month. So. Like, what is their stance on that? What are they? I don't know. They must know something we don't know. Like, maybe they got I'm a sure, lawyer yeah. that's like, bro, they can't sue you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they and can't do nothing. And then Sony walks in with their, like, billion dollars uh, <laughs> lawyers who are just like, bow down. Maybe Sony yeah. really doesn't have a case and they're just trying to scare, scare people. people you well, know? Maybe there's a reason why that. Maybe their face plates are made out of something different that keeps it from overheating or something. You know, like, I feel mm. like the, there might be a case where. Like, people are going to be switching out these face plates, and it's going to cause internal damage or something. Something, yeah. yeah. That's, I think that's what Sony is probably afraid of. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Or no, they're going to open Sony. it, and you're going to see the little mice that run the the, play, the <laughs> PlayStation 5. <laughs> they didn't want people to know, like, <laughs> how it actually <laughs> runs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so six days in Fallujah, a military FPS based on a real Iraq war battle has been resurrected by a new developer and publisher after being canceled by its original publisher over a decade ago. And just for yeah. clarity, I think this one was def it got canceled because it was kind of controversial with like the world events at the time, right? Well, yeah, because uh, the the Fallujah was like the worst. Like that whole situation was basically the most American deaths in any war since like Vietnam, like within like a certain period of time. So like we had a bunch of soldiers die over there. It was, yeah, it, yeah. It was and it was the families and like Fox news who were like, you know, fuck this game. And, uh, at the time. And so they basically were like, okay, we won't do it, but they had done it right. Like they went to like, uh, you know, infantry or like soldiers who were in Fallujah at the time and like went with them and like, you know, they showed them how things were like, how they were living over there and stuff like that. They were trying to make it very real, yeah. you know? So, but anyways, uh, it's set for release on PC and consoles this year. Uh, the new version of six days in Fallujah is developed by Highwire games, a studio founded by Halo's lead designer and published by Victura, uh, a tactical shooter. The game is based on events that took place in 2004 during the second battle for Fallujah in Iraq. Designed with accuracy in mind, over 100 Marines, soldiers, and Iraqi ci civilians have been interviewed to ensure authenticity. The campaign depicts six days of conflict as experienced by the U.S. Marines as they attempted to recapture Fallujah from Al Qaeda. Uh, to simulate the battle, or to simulate the battle, the developers at Highwire Games claim to have created quote unique technologies and game mechanics uh, designed to replicate the uncertainty and tactics of modern combat in a way other games do not. Uh, the original version of Six Days in Fallujah was announced in 2009 by developer Atomic Games and publisher Konami, but was met with criticism from war vets and anti-war groups. Uh, setting a violent video game in a real world war, particularly one not just fresh in the memory, but also seen as uh, unjust, was seen as controversial. 
Um, this caused Konami to pull out of the project. While never formally canceled by Atomic Games, news on Six Days in Fallujah gradually faded, blah, 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 blah. You get the point. It got canceled. They came back, and mm. they're doing this, I, which was really interesting to me. There's a, there's a really cool uh, – there's a YouTube channel called Gamers, but it's spelled G V M E R S. Like, uh, and they do like I'm talking like David Attenborough level like narration, uh, documentaries about video games, and it's so good. Go watch the one on Six Days of in Fallujah. And they go over the whole thing. They like they, they got talk about the new one coming out at all. Or no, no, no. Like this the... was for, this is older. This shows oh, okay. it shows you like all the shit that they went through trying to make this game, and like they show you footage from the game and all that stuff so, so i want to know if we're getting the same game from 2009 uh or if it's like a whole new game oh well, it's you know a different I mean? developer so i imagine it's gonna be a lot of the same base work with like remastered yeah. on top of it essentially yeah, yeah. Uh, or like at least go for the same idea because i mean yeah. a lot of stuff that was dope in 2009 probably won't hold up as no. well today you know what i mean yeah and i mean if you have the d designer of halo on it you know they're gonna at least try and keep it up to i'm excited to play that honestly you know i'm i'm that sounds interesting to me. me I too. like historical shit, you know. I like a little controversy in Yeah, my me too. Yeah. Um okay. <laughs> no to Russia. <laughs> yeah. Uh last one for me. Following rumors, Activision has formally announced that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater one and two will release on PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X and S, and Nintendo Switch this year. Uh the PlayStation and Xbox versions arrive on March twenty sixth, while the Switch edition doesn't have a specific release date, but is confirmed for twenty twenty one. Uh, I think this was one I would totally love to have on my Switch. I think it'd be fun yeah. to like take it around with you and like just bust a move whenever you want, you know? Yeah, and to upgrade to the Series X and PS5 versions, you have to pay ten dollars. Oh, that's not terrible, I guess. Nah, you know? but I feel like you should just be able to upgrade. Yeah, you know, Metro's doing the upgrade for free, I think. So yeah. a lot of games are doing the upgrade for free. You could just pull a Rockstar and you know charge full price again. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> every point, time. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're not doing that. Fucking bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, but yeah, that's got, it for the yeah. news. Yeah, so we're going to jump on over to this week's releases where I'm going to let you know which brand new games you can get in the next seven days. Uh, I'm going to let it, uh, it's window capture. There you go. I'm, le I'm letting uh, Devin. I'm sorry. I'm you, you just got to double click it and uh, set it to the. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, no, no, oh, no, no. You got to click it and then click the one below it. There you go. Gotcha. Yeah, technical yeah. support. Uh, hit OK. All right, so we're going to start off with a game called Pumpkin Jack. Uh, it's coming to PS4 on February 24th for $29.99. Pumpkin Jack is a spooky, scary 3D platformer in which you embody Jack, the mythical pumpkin lord. J uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> is this not like a ripoff of... Uh, you know, what's his name? Jack Skellington? Kinda. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought of when you said Pumpkin Jack. Yeah, and then they call him the Pumpkin Lord. You know, I don't know. But the Pumpkin King. The pumpkin yeah. King, you know, it's like... <laughs> A lot of similarities there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dive into an epic adventure through otherworldly landscapes and help the evil annihilate the good. Okay, weird. Okay. And then we have a game called Dotori, which is D-O-T-O-R-I, coming to Switch on February 25th for eleven ninety nine. dollars Explore places full of mysteries with Rico the Squirrel in Dotori, <laughs> the hardcore platformer with some puzzle elements where you have to break down some simple puzzles and jump at the correct timing to clear the stages. That looks terrible, but what, what I really want a squirrel a... named Rico. Yeah. It doesn't even look like a squirrel. No, it no. doesn't. It looks like a teddy bear. Yeah. That fucked a raccoon. <laughs> 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 it does. <laughs> Uh, and then we have Ghost and Goblins Resurrection coming to Switch on February 25th for $29.99. God, well, the game that nobody wanted. For $30. Ghost and Goblins Resurrection sees the return of the gallant knight, Arthur, as he embarks on a brand new quest to rescue the princess from the devious demon realm. And then we have uh, Wrath, Eon of Ruin. Uh, Coming to Xbox One, PS4, Switch, PC, February 25th for $24.99. Equipped with an arsenal of nine weapons of exceptional might and an inventory of ten powerful artifacts, you must traverse ancient crypts, sunken ruins, corrupted temples, and howling forests and to bring death too. to your enemies. I like I like whenever they do this. I yeah. like games to look like this for some reason. It yeah, makes me so nostalgic. That old school vibe, you know? Yeah. 
It's so cool. I want to make a game like that. I wish I could. I wish I could like design a game like around that look. You Whatever know what I'm happened to your little project that you were working on? I'm a while still back. working on it. I'm still you, like making so? like yeah. like world like the whole world thing. So I, I, yeah, I just hadn't heard you talk about it a long time. I wasn't sure if you were even still working on it. Yeah, I don't want to like talk about it like I know what I'm doing and then like <laughs> you know it's just it it looks cool. I've I um you know but it's just that that's all it is. It okay. looks cool. But I want to be able to do something like that. That'd be cool. That would be sick. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, forward to the, forward to the sky is coming to switch on February twenty fifth for forty eight ninety nine. Forward to the sky is a third person action adventure game in the Sky Tower Ruin. You are going to collect all the crystal pieces to connect the story, and everything will be revealed once Princess reaches the top level. <laughs> what what? what? The fuck? <laughs> The half of that made no sense. I guess you're trying to go like up. Platform? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Climbing, climbing, climbing game? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Cool. Okay. Yeah, cool. Nah. To the sky. To Spe- the skies. <laughs> but sp- speaking of uh, my game, I forgot to mention, I was talking to, to David Stanley from Skeletag the other day. And, like, oh, did just he get you hooked up with some custom no, I was, assets? I was, asking, I was <laughs> like asking him just about like uh, on game dev stuff. I was so just like, like tools, you know, know where I can get some Yeah, stuff? just giving me some hints, man, like helping me out. He's a, he's a good guy. Um, but, yeah, shout out to David. Um, anyway, so Retromania Wrestling. Uh, is, is co- coming to Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC on February 26th for twenty four ninety nine. Uh, the official successor to Arcade Wrestling Classic WrestleFest, Retromania <laughs> Wrestling. <laughs> Say that. Uh, I know. <laughs> Retromania Wrestling offers fast pace. Pick up and play arcade wrestling action with 2D sprites and backgrounds, a variety of match types, and real international wrestling stars. Um, and then we have Bravely Default 2 coming to Switch on February 26th for $59.99. Bravely Default 2 is a successor to the original Bravely Default game and will have players embark on a new story in a new world featuring all new heroes of light. A lot of the stuff from the Nintendo Direct is coming out like right pretty now. soon. Yeah. yeah. And then we got Neptunia Virtual Stars coming to PS4 on March 2nd for a price I could not find. The goddesses and virtual stars team up to take down the anti. Uh, the what? The what? The anti. The anime. I, in the <laughs> <laughs> in the music-based hack and slash game Neptunia the Virtual Stars. Music-based hack and slash game. So like, what's Maybe. that one VR? Um, till you drop. No. What was that one you were talking oh, about? Hack yeah, and slash yeah. music game. I don't know if it's not. Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. That's the shooting one. Was it Autica? Yeah, it was probably Autica. Oh. See, with this or one, no, was it? Uh, it's the it is the shooting one. The bullet. Uh, what's it called? I Fuck. It was, I thought it was till you pistol drop. whip. Oh, uh, till you till you drop isn't music based no. really. Oh. You're just getting attacked by a bunch of dudes. We this could be cool though. I mean, like maybe you attack on the beat. Like if you can stick to the beat, then your attacks are better or whatever. I read somewhere that Dark Souls bosses, I think maybe in Dark Souls three particularly, are all set to the tune of the music, except for one boss, and it's like halfway through the game, and they do it specifically to like throw your rhythm off because subconsciously, you like start going with the music when you fight bosses, and mm-hmm. then you get to that one boss, and it's like jarring because you're not you're used to fighting with the music. Psych, bitch. <laughs> Games that lied. <laughs> no, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, okay, so uh, Monster Jam Steel Titans 2 is oh coming God. to Xbox One, <laughs> Switch, PS4, PC, and Stadia on March 2nd for $39.99. Monster Jam Steel Titans 2 combines everything <laughs> fans loved about the original and packs in more <laughs> trucks, 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 brand new world Sunday, and Sunday, online Sunday. multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> Five dollars. Uh, that's it. That's all it costs to go uh, to one of those places. No, not the game. Oh, Just I was like, like that's a good oh, deal for this like game. <laughs> the, like to go to is it like <laughs> a monster jam? Like if you want to go to a monster jam, it's like five bucks. You know. I don't know. I, I haven't ever been to a monster jam. <laughs> I think we should all go to a monster jam. Dude, that's where the next Game Speak podcast meetup is happening. <laughs> monster jam. We, maybe we can interview Grave Digger. <laughs> uh, then we got Harvest Moon One World coming to PS4 Switch March 2nd for forty nine ninety nine. In Harvest Moon One World, fledgling farmers will explore an entire world full of new and familiar faces, unique villages, and adventurous challenges while managing their growing farm. 
No. I'm okay. sorry. The premise of this game sounds boring as shit. I had a no, a lot of people great. were into Harvest Moon. No. I know. I know. I knew a lot of people were into it. I the don't. old Harvest Moons are great. I don't know about this shit right here. This one looks kind of whack. But I'm just saying. I don't the know. An- the character animation looks a little whack. Like, yeah. Look at the drawings of like the. It looks like a Zynga game. It's a little weird. Yeah. And then we have Yakuza Like a Dragon coming to PS5 March 2nd for fifty nine ninety nine. A new chapter in the expensive ex- action-packed experience. Or er, wait, nope, no, hold on. We're going to restart that. A new chapter in the expansive action-packed series. Yakuza Like a Dragon introduces Ikeban Kasuga a low-level Yakuza member looking to prove his self-worth and follows what and follows him and his motley crew of unlikely allies as they attempt to rise from rags to riches in this <laughs> modern human drama modern human drama that's what <laughs> that's what modern humans look like um, <laughs> I actually really want to play this game. I like the other Me Yakuza too. games and I think uh, the turn-based battles will be a lot of fun. Oi. Oi. Uh, and then we got Maquette, which is M A Q U E T T E, coming to PS4, PS5, PC, March 2nd for 19.99. Maquette is a first-person recursive puzzle game that takes you into a world where every building, plant, and object are simultaneously tiny and staggeringly huge. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't I don't know. Get it. Uh, yeah. What does that even mean? It sounds like a <laughs> VR game. It looks like a VR game. I feel like that's a game that could only work in VR. But yeah, for PS5. That's it. That's that's all the games that are coming out in the next seven days. Mm. So (sighs) really stoked about this one. Yeah, Yeah. I'm so stoked, dude. I can't wait to play (laughs) all of that. But uh, (laughs) anyways, uh, so yeah, we're gonna jump on over to currently playing. Uh, I what have you guys been playing? Oh man, I've been having a good week. What have you been er, playing? Two weeks. Kick it off. A uh, fuck ton of VR. Um, oh yeah. Specifically, I've been modding the absolute dog shit to see if I can crash my computer on a uh, blade and sorcery. Oh hell yeah. Uh, you said you did an earthbending mod. Tell yeah. Them, tell so the people about I don't, that. I don't have it anymore. But yes, I had earthbending. I had a Mjolnir, uh, Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. Oh dope. That I could fly with. Um, you could fly with it. Yes. You. Oh, yeah. Dope. So not only can you smack an NPC and send him flying out of the map, but you can also you can like uh, grab it by the the strap at the bottom and swing it, and it'll start like getting all electrified and stuff. And then you like pull one of the triggers, and it just like flies. I don't know if I feel comfortable swinging my controller. <laughs> no, no, you don't swing. No, you swing the hammer. Oh, I strap. thought you had to like swing no. your controller to make the <laughs> no. hammer do that. I was like, I don't know, no, man. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, was like, um, I don't trust those straps like that. <laughs> but the the earth bending was actually it was amazing. I don't have it anymore because I had to update to the most recent version uh, a couple days ago and it it didn't work because of the update and whatnot. Um but there's different there's like five different moves that you can do and there's different hand gestures and motions that you have to do to activate each earth bending move. Oh, that's fun. Uh, so you got like a wall that you can pull up in front of you and then you can hit the wall and push it towards an enemy. You can call up these uh ground spikes to shoot an enemy really far. Um, you can pull up just like little boulders out of the ground and then smack them at different enemies. You can pull up like t- as many as your computer can handle. Um, you can have big uh, pillars fall out of the sky. Oh, that's sick. Uh, and yeah, and then each one has like its own specific hand motion. And yeah, that was badass. But can you blood bend? Uh, n- no. That would be tight. <laughs> that would just be tight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be horrible. I mean, you can. You can, you can, would be you can cool use too. the force, which is a set, you know, you yeah. pull them apart with the force. That's true. But true. Um, and then, um, so, but with the update, there was some good that came with it. Um, I have the Attack on Titan ODM gear, uh-huh. and I just fly all over the. I can, you can like Bro, use I grapples to fly. Shit. <laughs> it <laughs> is the blade and source, and then you need to update it to the eight point four um, because it's like it's ten times more stable than the current official version out. Um, cause the, the updated is like a beta technically. Oh, okay. Um, and do you have to like opt into it or something? No, you just have to finagle it in the steam menu. It doesn't give the option to straight up download it, but then you can like opt in for it. And as soon as I opted in for which beta I wanted, it started downloading immediately. And I was like, oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. If you ever get half-life Alex, there's a lot of really cool mods for that game too. Somebody made a whole like remake of PT and half-life Alex that you can play as a mod. Like, <laughs> so in the, um, in the updated version, 
so outer the Star Wars mod is not has not been updated for the the current version, but there is a whole ass Naruto world. You can get whoa, you can like entire, download whole worlds. That's you can get cool. the entire. I have the entire Hidden Leaf Village in uh, Blade and Sorcery, that's and sick. I can I fly around with it uh, with the ODM gear and stuff. That's sick. And then you can get. Um, I don't know why it didn't work on mine, but it comes with. It's a whole package, kind of like the Star Wars one, where it came with like different arenas. Um, but also weapons and stuff. Oh, but the Star Wars one comes with. Oh, I'm doing this when I get home, dude. Yeah, the outer. <laughs> so yeah, the outer rim, the Star Wars mod. It was a whole package where it came with lightsaber, like uh, sixty different lightsabers, um, enemies oh. to fight. So when all, you all download things. this, so you just go to the map in the in the main lobby, and like it takes you to like the Star Wars world or something. Yeah, like, you can pick which world to go to. Yeah, and then all the weapons are loaded in the weapons book. Oh, cool. Yep. I want to go to a Pokemon world. Oh, that'd be tight. I want a Dragon Ball Z yeah, world, I'm dude. Sure you can. I want, Ooh, Dragon I want Ball a Z whole world. Dragon Ball tight. Z thing. That you, can do Chidori, you can do um, Rasengan and Chidori. In, oh, in that's it as sick. Well. Uh, I haven't seen Kamehameha. any Dragon Ball Z stuff. I want to fly, you know, like Dragon Ball Z style, and I want to, like, Nimbus Cloud, and I want to, like, Kamehameha people. Yeah, like, I'm Kamehameha, sure somebody's going to make you it. You should have to, like, it should pick up on the mic. Like, you have to oh, do the oh, Kamehameha. <laughs> 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 that would be fucking sick. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I played a good bit of Control. Um, oh, yeah, that's a fun. That's a fun one. Yeah, my computer crashed a couple times. <laughs> hey, it'll uh, do that. Did you have weird texture issues with that game? No, it looked fucking. It looked fantastic, but the issue was like, if you go destroying any like offices or anything in the building, there's so many moving parts around it, and it's rendering everything like pretty damn high. And my shit like it crashed twice just because I had a whole room just destroyed. Did you have ray tracing turned on? <laughs> yeah. No, no, I did not. <laughs> hey, it'll work if you do like low ray tracing DLSS 2.0 and stuff. You know what I mean? You can make it work. I got. I was getting like 14 frames. Really? Yeah. See, I've I got the like ray, ray trace reflections and diffuse lighting and stuff. Like I I had it running like 40 frames per second or something. It wasn't like great, but oh, it, damn. No, it wasn't like unplayable either. You know what I mean? I might have to but mess also, with it, but oh well. I was also in 4K too, though. Ah, that'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. I yep. was <laughs> <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'd, uh, ra I'd rather take the 4K and decent frames over the ray trace. I'm kind of waiting on the ray tracing to get a little better. Dude, honestly, or for me, I I, I feel you, but like also like my 1440 is like the sweet spot. I feel like I'm really into the way it looks. You know, obviously 4K is gonna look better, but like performance trade off is like I feel like at 1440 you're looking so much better than. 1080p and then like you bump that up to 4k and it's like i don't notice the difference as much as i did with the jump to 1440 you know what yeah. i mean but like you're also retaining a lot of your power still you know yeah i can i can play most major titles 4k and 60 frames which is double double the frames what i was getting on my playstation so totally I'm i like to have like two like monitors you know and like just have one that's like a 1080 monitor and one that's like a super high resolution monitor. Yeah, so you're playing monitor and then you're just side. Yeah, you know. or like a monitor. Like I use them both for playing, but like some games like just run better on, you know, lower resolution. You yeah. know what I mean? So, I uh, and then I'll also, I returned to VR chat after like a couple year hiatus just to see. <laughs> just to see. And I fucking regret it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's still a lawless Ugandans land there. down there, dude. It is. No, so the Ugandans and most of the funny shit is gone. Now yeah. it's just like really lonely furries. Um, a lot of furries. Weird, weird like. A lot uh, of lo weird people. A lot of traps. Um, lots of guys trying to sound like women. And like, it's obviously like, you know, which to each their own. Uh, you know, I'm not judging. Wait, what's the furry thing about? I mean, furries? like, what's going on in that? They're like they, all dressed can, up like furries. So in VR chat, you can get. You can people make custom avatars and stuff and put them out in VR chat world and you can find these avatars and stuff and people have gone way overboard with the furries. Uh, and I'm joining. You'll just no go <laughs> <laughs> you'll just go to like a, a popular like social hub world and there'll just be like a fucking group of them like doing weird emotes and shit to each other like it's like all right like what do you what do you mean weird emotes like, ex like explain to me I don't. You, you, hey, I, you hey, can, can use your can imagination. Can we get X-rated with this? <laughs> can you explain? To be it? honest with you, everybody talks shit about Rec Room, but I, I find Rec Room to be the overall more enjoyable social space. Re well, Rec you know Room is I definitely mean? like the PG version of... Oh, yeah, There's Rec a lot of kids in Rec Room, for chat. sure, but yeah. I just feel like it's less weird on a general basis. Well, yeah, because <laughs> like you can't have... You can't have, like... 
freaking giant anime big titty bitches or giant furry creatures. <laughs> like, like it's the I, uh, I don't uh, get granted, what y'all's problem is. This sounds hilarious. It no, sounds fun. No, granted, it is it, it is, is a lot of fun because yeah, yeah, you get, some, <laughs> you get some weird. I got some like really funny avatars. Like I found one. It's like this super high res Asian kid holding a cat out in front of him, <laughs> and you're talking through the cat. <laughs> And like the cat is like a like the kid's like stable, but the cat is like uh, just like loose and like wobble like <laughs> wobbles around. That's and great. And it's the funniest looking thing. Oh my gosh! Um, See, this is the type of I, stuff that you should be streaming. I, uh, I, I don't, know. Why I, are you not streaming all the furries? You know, dude, I got oh. this one <laughs> avatar on VR chat that's like a King Kong, but he's like bigger than the whole map on any map you're on, and he's yeah. like gigantic, and he can spawn AK 47s into his hand for some reason. Like if you hold the side button, at like an AK will just pop into yep. his hand. Yep. Like I have a I have a uh, Titan from Titanfall oh, that's, that's like cool. thirty feet tall in the game, and um and people can get inside the Titan. What? Yeah, That's you tight. can get in the cockpit and like I'll just be like w- like whenever I tra- sometimes I'll I'll be that one, but it's it's too big for most maps. But I'll just be chilling or like walk around looking at people being weird, and then I'll hear a voice in my head. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, is that who, who is this? And they're like, oh, I just climbed a new Titan, dude. I'm like, oh, okay, uh, <laughs> get out. It's all the furries and then inside you can, of you. It has an emote. You can eject them. <laughs> Ejecto seed okay. That's tight. Uh, and then um and then just Warzone. So well, of course and. Cool. Uh, Jamal, how about that? Uh, how about that snipe yesterday? Huh? Was that yesterday? Well, the Jeep, which the Jeep? snipe? Oh, oh yeah, there was yeah. like a Jeep, like and we're like, dude, don't go outside. There was only like ten people. There was left. this Jeep hauling ass. It was a solo guy, and it, he's like, no way, you're gonna hit him. And he like fires the one shot, and then just like Head team shot. wipes him, like, and it, he's like riding around in the, in the in the Jeep. It was nice. It was a nice one. Yeah, but we didn't win. We lost. We only lost because you start. You were like, "Oh, we're gonna lose anyways." I'm just gonna play haphazardly. I'm like ran outside. I was getting and kills. I almost got a collateral headshot. I broke one dude and then down the one behind him. Because we were playing quads and he was the only one left, and there was yeah. no way to buy us back at this point because there's like ten people left. But he could have won. He could have won. Yeah. He's got the skills for it. He just like didn't believe in himself. You know, it's like <laughs> w- we need to have an intervention. With it. <laughs> just kidding. But anyways, what you've been playing, Brent? Uh, well, that reminded me. I've been playing a lot of Population 1 lately. Mm. I've been just John Wick and fools in that game. I, I don't know. I'm weirdly good at it lately. And Season 2 or Season 1 starts on the 25th, and they're going to add, like, an LMG and, a like, a shield cola and a bunch of other, like, nice. swords and stuff. So it should be going down. Swords. That could be cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think, swords? I think it's going to – they said melee weapons, so I think it's going to be, you- like – you can't even run in the game, though. Like I'm going to be hiding in trees, dropping down <laughs> on people. <laughs> There's definitely times when people have, like, busted through a door on me, and I've been close enough to, like... Try to swat at them. To stab yeah. them. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's been a couple times where we ran up on a player and tried to hit him, and we're like, we can't kill him. I think the trick would be, like, flying at somebody. You yeah. know? Like, if you flew straight at somebody, you could probably get to him fast just enough. Just get up on just that big tower and yeah. just, like, dive down <laughs> on people. They should let you block, sh- block bullets with a sword. Oh, that would be sick. Like, ninja style. Yeah. Yeah, but you can only block for like a, a temporary, like maybe like a couple times or yeah, something. Yeah, you like wave it like this and it like Yeah, and blocks. it just blocks that a couple. That would be tight. Um, I finished Dragon Ball Kakarot, okay. finally. Okay, so uh, where does it end? It ends right after the Majin Buu saga. Okay, so huh. yeah, it goes straight into Super, basically. After yeah, that. and there's a Super DLC, right? Well, I thought there was like a Super Story DLC, but really it's just battles from Dragon Ball Super without yeah. the actual story. Because the story's not that great. No, dude, uh, I beg to differ. I've been sitting there binge-watching Dragon Ball Super. Oh, you've like, been watching it? I've watched like 50 episodes. So far, where you at? and it's fucking excellent. Yeah, where are you at? In um, it? let's see. Right now, I we're future trunks uh, uh, again. Just do yourself a favor. Just watch a summary recap on that and skip to like the last three episodes <laughs> of, of that whole saga. Trust me. Really? I gotta watch it. I'm sorry. I'm watching everything. Wait, no, yeah. uh, you've already like met like Beerus and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I the, met Beerus. The trunks saga is like right after the first tournament. Yeah. Okay. This okay. is before they haven't done the twelve tournament. No. Or the, the twelve the universes, universes tournament. Yeah. We met the little the ruler of the twelve universes guy yeah. who's hey, like hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's I'm not bad, but it's like it's it, it doesn't feel as serious as like Dragon Ball Z. I don't know, man. I really like it. Like I, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Like the, I, maybe the I'm Trunk just saga crazy. really put me off. Especially they're like 
all right, we're going to use the fusion earrings. You're like, oh, don't, last yeah, time yeah, we- yeah, oh. don't ruin anything. <laughs> God damn it. Are you fucking kidding me? Let's just not talk about this anymore. <laughs> really God know. damn it, dude. Rick gets so bad about that. Uh, <laughs> he didn't even tell you anything. I knew they were going to use the fusion earrings, man. Uh, Wait, what? You said you were already past that No, part. I said I'm at the Trunks part, the new Trunks saga or whatever. It just started. I don't know anything about anybody using any fusion earrings other than like way back in Dragon My Ball bad. Z. I, I knew way before I they even saw that episode fused, that they were going to. They haven't know. fused anybody together since fucking <laughs> Tr- since fucking Vegeta and, and fucking <laughs> Goku fused to beat fucking Majin Buu, like uh, okay, so my I, bad, bro. my bad. I was thinking of the the fusion earrings from Dragon Ball Z. I wasn't even thinking of all that. So yeah. the, I, I was like, wait a minute. So like, I, I don't even remember that part. So I couldn't spoil it. Okay, I think Audra ruined something for herself earlier today too. Because <laughs> wait, we were at uh, we were, me, me and Audra have been watching it together. And um, we were at the uh, game exchange or whatever earlier, and she picked up this, like, Goku action figure, and she was like, oh, this is cool. And she, like, looked, looked at, the at the back, back of it, yep. and she was like, oh, oh, don't look at the back of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was partially because of that, and then also just internet. Like, I knew long before I saw the episode. <laughs> yeah. My uh, apologies. No, it's okay. I'm really enjoying it. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh, so you know. Anyways, Anyways what I was uh, <laughs> I've been playing Borderlands three. Also, I'm like level twenty now. You know, so ult- <laughs> instinct. <No. laughs> yeah, I I haven't played it since like all of the Snowvid, but I need to hop back on there on Borderlands. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm enjoying it. It's kind of like every now and then I just got to shoot something in a game, you know? Like, I play a lot of games that are, like, highly story-focused, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I need a game that I can fall back on just to, like, bust a cap and not think too hard, you know what I mean? It's called uh, get a whole new hard drive and get Warzone. (laughs) (laughs) I've actually been thinking about getting an extra hard drive just to keep, like, like Warzone and Red Dead 2 on. Yeah, man. (laughs) It's worth it. But yeah, I've been playing Borderlands. Borderlands is like 80 gigabytes by itself. Yeah, it's pretty big. Just uh, don't hit your data cap. Right, yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah, that too. And then I have been playing A Plague Tale Innocence, which I found on uh, Game Pass. And it is really, really good. I beat it, actually. I beat the whole thing. Uh, And it's longer than I thought it was going to be. Man, I got to tell you, if you want like a a light stealth-focused fucking game with great graphics and a really dope story don't get the medium get plague tale innocence man fucking it is awesome it's a lot of fun it's a real simple game it's an easy game it's not like gonna make you like super frustrated or challenge you in any way but it'll tell you like a really dope story and like the stealth parts are fun and exciting like there are a couple parts where you'll die over and over again but like it's not so frustrating that you're like, fuck this game ever at any point. You know what I mean? <sighs> I don't know. I really enjoyed it. And like the graphics are fantastic. Like, yeah, uh, it's, it's like pr- critically acclaimed. Like a lot of people love that. Game. I can so see why it's got a lot going for it. <laughs> That's true. Fuck the medium, dude. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, anybody thinking about playing the medium, go play Plague Tale Innocence instead. You'll have a much better time. Whee. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to play it. Uh, I've been thinking about it. Um, I think it's on Game Pass. It is. That's yeah. what I was saying. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I played it. Yeah. Um. That's all you've been playing. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Yeah. I think so. Okay. So I've been playing Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Oh, uh, look at you balling yeah. out. Yeah, dude. I went. I went ahead and dropped it because I. I've been. I was staying at my sister's house for the five days that I had no power. Oh, and you so gotta have something on the Switch when you like. In oh yeah. Snowvid world. You know mm-hmm. what I mean. It was like quarantine all over again. Couldn't go to work. There was nothing to do. So. We got uh, Super Mario 3D World, and uh, me and my sister and my girlfriend just played for, like, five days straight. Oh, nice. Like, Y'all all played together? Oh, yeah. It's oh, fun, fun, dude. Uh, I mean, I, I basically did everything, but it was like... <laughs> 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 it's like that, that game is so, like... Uh, it can be really frustrating with multi- multiple people. I heard somebody saying it was kind of hard. It's very hard. And, and the reason why is because the, the perspective, like... You're looking at a 3D map from the side. So, like, they'll have, like, a block here, and you're trying to jump up and hit the block, but you keep jumping behind it and in front of it. And, like, <laughs> and anytime you run ahead of everybody, they all in, they all turn into bubbles and follow you and then have to pop That's out of the bubble. It's so fun. annoying. But 
you know, like we made it through. We're you know, we got all the way to the end. So it was y'all fun. beat the whole game. Yeah. Well, basically, we're like uh, on the last map. I think the last boss and uh, like so me and my girlfriend were going to beat it. Um, Sweet. But yeah. And then there's Bowser's Fury, which I tested out a little bit of. Um, Bowser's Fury is very interesting. It's more of a single player thing. Like you can play two players, but the second player doesn't really matter. Like they can't do anything. Mm. But the sing- it all it is is basically like it seems like a concept like for a future mainline Mario game like that they made for this. It's like a six hour thing, but it's like an open world. So like it's like open world Mario with like all these different things that you got to do. And like, you're trying to kill Bowser like every now and then he'll like bust up and start destroying shit. Like it, it's, it's very weird. I have a feeling that they're going to use it in future Mario games, but um, interesting. But yeah, so I played that, played some Warzone with Devin and uh, the, my other Warzone crew, and then uh, played a little bit of Grounded, um, w- like hop back into that for a little bit. I still need to try that game. It's well, pretty dope. They added like, I don't know if they added this or what, because I don't remember ever getting to this point, but like I jumped into this pond like and it's horrifying it's a fish it's horrifying big old, big old giant goldfish or something no there's like water bugs that are like oh. ginormous <laughs> like spiders <laughs> and then there's like uh tadpoles that you can like kill and stuff but the water is so creepy dude like i just hate water i hate water Ex- I mean, except yep. for drinking yeah, it. that's one of my irrational fears is yeah. big open bodies of water yeah it's it's terrifying and, and I, they do it on purpose <laughs> they do it to, to make me scared. <laughs> First time I ever realized I was scared of water in, in games was in, uh, it was a Tomb Raider game, oh, uh, like on the PC back in the day. There's like a part where there's like a little bit of water, and I, I was so terrified to go near it. Like, I don't, I don't know why. But you know what scares me is when the sharks eat you in Grand Theft Auto Five. Oh, yeah, that's terrifying. That shit too. is horrifying. Or in Far Cry. Uh, or in uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Yeah, dude, sharks are just bad, dude. Yeah. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> Why do we save sharks again? No, I'm just kidding. No, but <laughs> <laughs> let's kill them. Let's no, kill all the sharks. <laughs> Game Speak podcast. <laughs> kill all the sharks. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, These guys no. want all the sharks dead. Cancel them. No, nah, no, but like, have you ever noticed? Like, like sharks are probably the most terrifying thing ever. Like in the way that they just don't like most animals look like they're they're like alive. You know what I'm saying? Like you look at a dog and you can see it's like. It's personality. <laughs> you can see like it's a little soul and it's like, yeah, but you look at a shark and its eyes are like hollow and they're just like, I'll fucking eat you. You ever like, looked at any other fish, though? Like, I, but I feel like even fish like have you seen goldfish that like play around and stuff like there's like fish that have like like they're they're there. <laughs> they're not just floating tanks of death. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, <laughs> Like murder, t- like with constant, like th- who constantly have blood hanging out of their mouth, like for whatever reason. Like your next video should just be like an anti-shark <laughs> promo video. <laughs> but th- that's the funny thing, though, is like I still, uh, you know, like I love sharks. I'm not against them. We need it, to they're just terrifying. We need to find a <laughs> VR shark experience for for Jamal. Mm, oh, dude. I bet they have it. Yeah, I'm not about it. It's called Subnautica. No, oh, God. I actually have heard that. Can you like, play it in VR? Yeah, I've heard <laughs> it. I've heard not only can you play it in VR, but I've heard it's like one of the best VR games you can get. Like Probably the most terrifying. Well, I guess I'll never know. <laughs> but anyways, that's all I've been playing. I mean, I did play a little Game Boy, uh, and I, I, obviously I was playing Dinosaur Planet. But I, I, yeah, when the power first went out, I just like bo- popped out my Game Boy and started playing uh, like Golden Sun on it. And oh, stuff. It was yeah. fun. No, uh, anyways, but let's jump on over to the topic of the show. Today we have two topics. We're going to start with the first topic, which is video games that lied. And I'm and I'm kind of looking at this in a way of like the game itself lied or the developer around the game lied uh-huh. or like, you know. In some way, we the gamers were, were lied, lied to. to. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. We got some good examples of this. One. Yeah. I <laughs> so, I I put a couple in the in the the Slack here. Um, I didn't put any in the Slack, but I got uh I got it here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I have several that come to mind. Yeah. Okay. So, first one, most obvious one, uh, well, one of the most obvious ones is Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Mm. Uh, all the previews leading up to this game were showing you as playing a snake. Everybody was hyped about Snake you know, since the first game. 
Like everybody's like, yeah, we're finally gonna get to play a snake. E- all the preview material. The case oh. has snake's face on it. Like. Yeah, the case has snake. <laughs> the, the trailer for it was like, uh, it was like a five minute like, or not even a trailer. There was like a five minute gameplay thing that they did, and like it only showed snake like you know fighting like some of the bosses and stuff. Then you get the game, you play a snake for like ten minutes, and then you don't play as him ever again. Like, and what's funny is like the footage they have of Snake is like late game footage where they mm-hmm. like edited Snake's like character over overriding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> yeah. It, but they literally like legitimately lied just about it. Like, yeah, Kojima's good at that. You know, he's just a good old liar. And it's no. like I kind of can see why they lied because like to keep the story fresh, keep it interesting, keep you guessing. You know what I mean? But like if this was modern day, this would have been like a Last of Us two thing. Everybody would have flipped out. Oh like, yeah. Like, we don't get snake. I mean, that's exactly what happened with Last of Us 2. Like, Class you actions know? left and right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They get sued to hell. <laughs> like, um, At least Snake didn't get beat to fucking death with a golf club halfway. Wow, you know? spoilers. Wow, <laughs> Brent. <laughs> Devin flips the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> fuck <Fucking> bullshit. <laughs> All right. Okay, Brent, what you got? Or Devin, what are you? Fucking No Man's Sky. You know, that's probably the biggest Oh, one. my the God. The most egregious example. And, and the biggest sure. one that definitely affected me because I, like, since I was a little kid, I always wanted a just free space slash galaxy exploration game where I could literally fly from the surface of a planet into into space. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, which that's basically all it was when No Man's <laughs> Sky like did. That's, the only thing <laughs> you could do. <laughs> <laughs> But, but uh, it was so like repetitive and redundant. Yes, it was and boring. and what's his name? That fucker. Um, what what was his name? The guy who um, created. I can't it? remember. Anyways, yeah, I promised a whole lot of shit and was like and like, they oh, is it is it multiplayer? They yeah, promised yeah. multiplayer, dude. Yeah, and then <laughs> two players. He's like, but no multiplayer. But two players will never meet up. It, the, it's just too big. And then two players got to the same exact point in the universe and they couldn't even see each other at all. There was different because there's renders no of the game. Yeah, there was no <laughs> multiplayer. <laughs> just um, straight lie. So much shit and uh, a he lot of repetition in in the random generated shit. Like, just, uh. did he claim there would be like big like battles and stuff where like the ships would all come together in space and have like fights and like knock each other out of orbit and shit and like there would be rivers and like on the planets and like apparently door hacking and warping between galaxies and shit like a bunch of stuff that just like different planetary physics like every planet was supposed to have its own gravity like Mm -hmm. yeah but in the end apparently he did live up to that now he has fixed it must must give credit where credit is due he did go back like the game now is entirely different he he also apologized like he came out and was like i fucked up i'm sorry (laughs) you know like (laughs) there's a lot of people like Peter Molyneux, yeah. who don't do that. But uh, anyway, so. Yeah, my first two are Peter Molyneux stories. Uh, the first one, and uh, probably the most, like, I don't know, blatant lie by Peter Molyneux, in my opinion. He's got a lot of blatant lies. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> in 2009 at E3, he uh, previewed this game called Project Milo, which was supposed to be on the Kinect. And Wait a minute. He's the one who came up with Project Milo? Yes. And what? basically, Project Milo was supposed to be this like AI child that lived in your Xbox. In the Kinect. <laughs> that you could like talk to I, with your Kinect. I like, vaguely remember that. I, I, I remember <laughs> I was like at the time, the, the uh, my girlfriend at the time, I remember showing her and her family and be like, this is what gaming is about to be. Dude, like, yeah, uh, he made it seem like this was the future. And he's like, and this is happening. Yeah, it, like right real time. Yeah, <laughs> like so. Like Milo is like this little kid, and inside the screen, he's like, "Hey, uh, I made a picture for you, and like you can go over, or like and like, or he's like, could you draw something for me? Uh, that's what he said. And so like you go over and you draw something on a piece of paper, and you put it down over the connect, and he grabs it in real time, and it's like your drawing was scanned perfectly onto the paper, and he's just like. Thank you. I'm gonna hold on to this forever, like type situation. Yeah. I'm like, holy 
fuck. And they made it seem like Milo would just react to everything you said, like with perfect tone <laughs> and stuff. Like they'd be like, "Hey, Milo, what are you doing today?" And he's like, "Oh, nothing, just hanging out at the river." <laughs> you know. <laughs> It was basically like if Alexa was like a real person. It was like straight artificial intelligence. They were like trying to convince us that there was like I a believed legit it. AI kid. Like Cause Cause it, the whole the, the way whole, they sold the whole it. Segment of that was very very hyped and a lot of shit that I don't think we saw much of. Honestly, no, we saw yeah. like that one time and then we never heard of Milo again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I had no idea Peter Molyneux was the one that was doing yeah, that. Yeah, he now. was the guy who did the whole presentation and mm. everything. Nobody, like, stopped him and was like, hey, but this is all fake, though. Dude, not only did, did he, like, claim it wasn't fake, but at the end of the present, I watched the presentation last night because I was just, like, I couldn't stop. <laughs> but, like, at the end of the presentation, he's like, he's like, not only is this technology working today, he's like, but later on in the E3 presentation, we'll have a behind-closed-doors presentation where you can try it yourself. Like, <laughs> Did anybody try it? I don't know. I don't know. But he claimed that people were going to get to try it and shit. So mm. At some point, uh, th- he was interviewed by somebody. I-, I think it was at like Game Informer or something. And they-, they just straight up asked him. They were like, are you a pathological liar? And he was just like, he was like, I'm never speaking to the to the media again. <laughs> like, because like, like, they just called his bullshit. Dude. Like, he-, he lies about everything. Like, uh, you got there. I guess I'll do the next one. Yeah. Uh, but the cake in Portal. Oh, Portal actually. Two. Hold up. The cake wasn't a lie though. But it was though. But you can get the, but you can find the cake in game. It doesn't matter. The cake was a lie. That the the main purpose of it is that it was a lie. Yeah, like the <laughs> They they directly say the cake is a lie, but I will argue that the cake is not a lie because there is cake, you know? GLaDOS had cake in that bitch. Yeah, you know but, but is it part of the main story? Like I think so. Once you get to the end of the game, right? You see the cake and there's like like robots and shit. I don't know. I don't remember. I just remember like I'm pretty sure there's an actual cake in the game somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got I got to find yeah, this I'll, out. I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, you can search it. Devin search is the cake real? And is the cake <laughs> alive? <laughs> <laughs> is is it, that Portal 1 or 2? I didn't I didn't I think it was 2. Oh, yeah, one of them. I'm not sure. That's Portal 2. two. The cake is spoken of frequently throughout Portal. Although uh, the Dins frequently claim that the cake is in fact a lie, the ending of Portal shows the actual cake. Okay, the, th- this implies that GLaDOS really hid the cake very well for cake and refreshing. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. So, uh, you know, we'll just know this one from the top. Yeah, we'll <laughs> have to take it. But I still think to that point though it yeah. was a lie yeah. you know like it, yeah at the end it, it's not but it still. was a lie to all the other people who never got the cake <laughs> yeah <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not a lie to the main character but people uh, recreate it, it did an actual recipe for the cake from portal <laughs> dude i've seen so many i want one um okay is it uh is it devin is it me no it was you that's me yeah, okay yeah. uh my next one is another peter molino fapu okay uh, this one comes in the form of another Connect exclusive game called Fable the Journey. Uh, when oh asked shit. in an interview whether uh, Fable the Journey would be on rails, Peter Molyneux claimed adamantly that it would not be on rails, which turned out to be a lie in the final build <laughs> of the game. <laughs> I remember that fucking <laughs> game. Like, you just like pick up like fairy like like sir, like you know what I'm talking about. Like it was just like a ball of like. Yeah, it was a weird looking game. He made it seem like it was gonna be like a legit fable game where you're like going through the fable world with your hands and like it's like VR almost without a shit. helmet. Yeah, exactly. Or a headset, but <laughs> yeah. And, and so <clears throat> the other thing about him was that game that he was making called like uh, Goddess or whatever. Or right. Godus. I didn't even put that one down because I didn't know enough about the actual game. I'm sorry. Well, he put it on Kickstarter uh, with 22 Can or whatever his yeah, new, yeah. his new company. And they got – he asked for – I think it was something like – it was like 80000 or something, and he got 130000 and then they just never made the game. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's like, fucked up. Yeah, and they, like, interviewed him. And the game never came out, but they interviewed him, and he was like, uh, we didn't get enough money from the Kickstarter. And they were like, you hit the goal. And he was like, no, we didn't. Like, in the interview, just straight up lied. Like, no, we didn't get the 130000 Oh, my 000. God, dude. That, that, fuck, fuck this guy. Yeah, that's what they <laughs> asked him, and they were just like – it's like, how did he make Fable? 
And like, he's like still in the industry making games today. Oh no, know? with his own company though, and they just they just fired a bunch of people. It was part of the news, you know. I mean, he's still putting shit out though. You know what I mean? When's the last time he put out a game though? There's a couple. I looked it up uh, last night. He's put out several games since the Gladys fiasco or whatever. How do you spell his last name? Peter. It's like Molino with an X. Yeah, it's like, like French. A, like a French. Peter Molino games. Mm. Let's see. Uh. Yeah. Wait, did Godus actually come out? Cause there's a no. Uh, the last game he put out was the tra- Trail Frontier Challenge. Why is it red? No, the page hasn't been created. I guess the game didn't that's, actually come uh, out. That's probably the one he's about to put out what right now. Go- Godus? Yeah, it says... Uh, Okay, so for Godus, it says, while the mobile versions of the game continue... So the mobile version of it came out. (laughs) So it says, uh, the company launched a Kickstarter campaign to raise funds and met their funding goal of uh, $732,000. Godus was designed by Peter Molyneux, who described it as a spiritual successor to his earlier creation, Populous. While the mobile versions of the game continue to be updated, the early access Steam release has yet to see an updated beta since 2016. Wow. The contract of the lead developer of the game, Conrad Nazinski, expired 28, uh, the 28th of June 2016, and it has been reported that there's no one left working on the game. What other games have they made with 22 cans? Uh, 22 can. What kind of name is that? Uh, games developed. Curiosity back in 2012 for Android and iOS. It's called What's Inside the Cube. Godus, which only came out to the Steam uh, early access or whatever, and Android. And then Godus Wars. And then the Trail Frontier Challenge. Oh, and Legacy is the one that's about to come. Yeah, out, to allegedly. be announced. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't believe anything he says at this point. Yeah, you know, shady character, shady guy, making some shady games. But hey, I he love made Fable. the first Fable though. I know. Like how? Like, I know. What? <laughs> how can you be responsible for that masterpiece and then just be like? Eh. It's funny because he's also like a really old. Dude. He's sixty one. Wow! Like he's <laughs> like it's weird to be that old and like like into making games. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's just a weird thing. He's looked sixty one ev- even like twenty years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, I got I got one. All right, uh, lay it on me. Y'all remember old Ubisoft and uh, the OG Watch Dogs? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was that so was, beautiful looking. It was amazing looking, and there was like a bunch of features that they showed off in the gameplay demo that never saw the light of day in the re- in the final product. Yeah, they had like in the in the E three demo, like the fabrics on everybody's clothes were like blowing in the wind. Yeah, and shit, yeah. you know what I mean. Like you could see like the particles in the air. It was like. running on like <laughs> the best graphics card. And at what's the time. crazy is like when Watch Dogs finally came out, it wasn't even like a bad looking game. It just didn't live up to like what it was supposed to look like. Yeah. That they had it, yeah, you know, because like if they had just not overhyped it, it would have been like a good, a totally accepted, yeah, yeah like. Um. But that's a, that's a, Ubisoft does that sometimes. They <laughs> like sometimes, <laughs> they all the time, a number of times. Um, fucking yeah. another one was uh, since we're on Ubisoft, um, the the um, what's the one with the New York City post not post apocalypse, but um, the division. Yeah, the division. Oh, the division. They completely changed how the division looked and uh, kind of worked too. Yeah. Um, before, whenever between the E3 and then the release. I think that's because Destiny came out, so they were like, ah, let's go more Destiny like. They did make the division two look really good. Like it, it did. Was, yeah. It is dope looking. And honestly, I mean, I'm not shit on Division either. I, I, no, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed Division one. Yeah. Wow. So Peter Molyneux's first game came out in 1989. Wow, dude. Holy shit. Old school. Yeah. Back when he was just a young 30-year-old. <laughs> 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 uh, Anyways, uh, w- what uh, what else you got? What uh, what games lied? Uh, okay. Uh, we've already done a couple of the ones that I had just like, you know, so I only have one left. Uh, but when Destiny was announced, basically oh God, they yeah. claimed that it was going to be this huge open world and that the beta for the game was only 5% of the game. And it turned out the, the beta was more like 25% of the game. Yeah. And it wasn't a big open world at all. Yeah, you they, know? Yeah. they were spinning it like it was going to be an MMORPG. Like, like, they directly huge. said, and when they're showing it off for the first time, they're like, see those mountains over there? 
Like you're gonna be able to, you're go, gonna be able to go over there. Like I completely <laughs> forgot about that. Holy yeah. shit! It's it's amazing that Bun- uh, that uh, Bungie was able to come back from to that. save that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like uh, seriously, like people pretend like that never happened. Like people are just like, but uh, Destiny's awesome. Destiny Two's awesome. I'm like, dude, I remember Destiny. No. I think like, the, sucking one of the reasons Destiny why 2. Destiny did so well is because they were kind of like open with it when they finally like they put out betas and stuff real early in like yeah. you know I don't know. But also like they had uh. What What's his name? The the little dude uh, from Jarvis. Game of Thrones. Oh, Peter Dinklage. Uh, Peter Dinklage, yeah. and then the they Dinklebot. completely took him out of the I'm game. I'm kind of mad they got rid of him because he. I liked his little voice. Me he too. Did. I think he. Did uh, everyone was job. hating on him though. And they were saying his voice sucked and like. And then, uh, well, yeah, that's, that's why some bullshit. they. Bullshit. I think he's a great little no, I, voice actor. You know. Like I, I was deep, deep into D1 since it released, and everybody loved Dinklebot, and everybody was fucking livid when they took him away. I think it had. If I had to guess, it was something to do it with cost too much. Yeah, because you know? he got huge. That was during Game of Thrones, like rise or big time rise. Anyways, Google it because I, I I swear, like people they claim that they got rid of it because people didn't like no, the voice now, acting. No, That's I know a lot of what people they claimed, but I bet it was a financial thing. I know That's a lot of people hated the new uh, little bot that they the bot voice that they did. Do Peter um, Dinklage? Oh yeah, why did Peter Dinklage? Destiny. Yeah, this is important. Why oh why is Destiny Why replaced? Destiny ditch Dinklage? <laughs> <laughs> uh, why why ditch the Dinklage? Oh, oh little Dinklebot. Go down. Uh Hollywood, Hollywood no- nonsense. Uh, Destiny is replacing Peter Dinklage's voice with Nolan North, not because Bungie was disfati- oh, wow. dissatisfied. Oh wow, Nolan North is the guy they replaced yeah. him with. But because his acting commitments elsewhere made him less available. Okay. Yeah. Game of Thrones. Probably wow. got to do lots of voice lines for. I could have sworn. I guess I I was reading about something else or something. Well, I mean, at least it's Nolan North, you know. Yeah, Nolan North is dope. Uh, Who's that boy? He was also in the medium, though. <laughs> 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 He's no longer. Is anything associated yeah. with the medium? Uh, but yeah, so that's it for that p- that topic. We're going on to topic. Molado. <laughs> so our second topic is our favorite comedy movies. Um, this one is brought to you by Sarah Brock, which uh, shout out to Sarah. Uh, saw you had a kid. Uh, congrats on the baby. Oh, yeah. Congrats, Sarah. Congratulations. Uh, w- th- let us know what it's like to be a parent, because that sounds terrifying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, let's 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 drop our favorite comedy films. I brought six of them. You guys are about to find out that almost all of my comedy films that I like are like came out between 2005 <laughs> and 2012 and are like fucking can't just you know unoriginal Bullshit. comedy. Yeah. No, just, well, I tried <laughs> I tried to pull from like uh, from like different eras of my life, like when I was younger, what what I watched and was my favorite. Then like whenever I was a little bit older, and like you know, just kind of grabbed a bunch of stuff that I can always go back and I'll still watch it and find it funny. You know, I don't watch a lot of comedies these days. To Me be either. With you, I you live know? in the dark now. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, all right, so I'll start it off. Number six, the Rush Hour franchise. I love Rush Hour, dude. It's a lot of people don't consider it. Like they're not like oh that's a comedy but that's a uh, fucking comedy yeah honestly yeah uh, it's definitely I would yeah it's I a, would not Rush think, Hour when I think comedy I don't think Rush Hour but it's yeah it's funny as fuck it's a, it's like Chris Tucker you got Jackie Chan you got the antics dude it's going down <laughs> it, the uh, wacky antics <laughs> you like uh, there's so many, yeah there's so many things I still quote from that like like we'll be playing like uh, <laughs> we were playing uh, Warzone the other day and somebody was like. Oh my gosh! It's like it's, uh, we still need like seven or seven thousand dollars or something like that. And I was like thinking in my head, it just popped up in my head. The like, he's like fifty billion dollars. What do you think you got? <laughs> or who do you think you kidnapped, Chelsea Clinton? Like, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I always think of that. In my, <laughs> my my favorite quote from there, he's like, uh, "Man, don't nobody understand the words that are coming out of your mouth." <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots of stuff in that movie that would not work today not with, with honestly a lot of my movies are, are just would not fly today. yeah they would all be canceled <laughs> like <and laughs> anyways they oh. were a good they were a good duo 
Uh, and then, did you know that they hated each other when they first started uh, filming the Rush Hours, and then came to be like best friends? That makes it even better because it plays along with the movie. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. probably why the first movie was so believable. <laughs> <laughs> They're just method actors. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Brent or Devin. So okay, I got way more than six. Uh, maybe not way more, but I have more than six. So I'm just gonna go until we run out, and then I'll do the last couple because they're not in any particular yeah. order. No, nine uh, aren't in order either. Um, I gotta say the scary movie movies. If I had to uh, pick one, I guess I would pick three. Yeah, but scary movie three is yeah. my number but two. But I love all of the scary movie films. You know, I love scary movies in general. So like to just play off of that really just tickles my funny bone for some reason. I don't know why. Which which one had the made fun of Eight Mile? Was that three? That was yeah, three. Three. Three's okay, the yeah, best. three was an all time favorite. Three was the goat. Know. But honestly, like honestly, all of them up to four were like really funny. Well, to you me. Know, you know how you. You know which generation you're from if you find one and two the, to be the funniest, and then you know which generation you're from if yep. you find three to be the yeah. funniest. It's like a like a separation. One there. and two well, is like older millennials. It also yeah. hits three different because they're playing off different eras of like yeah, horror. True. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like and uh, what what's his name? George and like oh, they they got the signs going nasty yeah. or whatever. Dude, that that makes it like one of the funniest fucking parts, and it's like so overlooked in that movie is whenever they first come out of the house, like whenever the the kids are out in the cornfield screaming. And like they just kind of like run around each other, and it makes like the whooshing <laughs> noise. Like every oh, time, I, love that. <laughs> like, I like whenever so the like lady cop shows up, and her hat just gets progressively <laughs> bigger like every scene. Like <laughs> it's so stupid, but it's just like subtle and it's fucking horrifying. hilarious. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> like uh, the kid so getting good. the shit beat out of him. Oh like, yeah, thrown up into the ceiling fan. Uh, <laughs> shot out the window. There's some horrible parts in there that like like the priest is like obviously a pedophile like about to <laughs> molest it like he's just brought like the wine over and shit like <laughs> like no <laughs> they just don't even talk about it like <laughs> Uh, or like the classic, if a rat goes outside, does it become a mouse? <laughs> dude, that was one no, of Kevin, Kevin Hart's Hart. yeah. first yeah, big I roles, dude. I completely forgot Kevin Hart was in that until I saw a screenshot the other day, and I was like, holy fuck. That was early, <laughs> early Kevin Hart. And, and the dude that's with him. Like, I forget oh, who yeah, that dude is. That guy yeah, was from great. Kangaroo he, Jack. He's, he's in a lot of fun. stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I love no, my story. aunt lives over there. She's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I love that. How uh, you going to wake up dead? <laughs> <laughs> gonna Yo, my cousin Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what, what you got, Devin? Um, man, so I got a couple. They're all ca- uh, space balls. Space balls. Man. Man, space, that's a classic right there. I'm going to throw it back. Right I'm throw it back. That is space uh, definitely a throwback. Comb the desert. <laughs> I'm, I'm surrounded by gold. assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we ain't found shit. <laughs> I fucking love that shit, dude. <laughs> Wait, that's right now? No, it's now. Wait, just now? No, right then. Now. <laughs> They're Damn. watching the replay of each other. I like that was one of the few like old movies like from that era that I really found funny. You know what I mean? And what what was that? Uh, the director's name? Um, he did a bunch of Mel Mel Gibson, right? Or no, no not no. Mel, Gibson. Mel Mel Gibson. something. Mel it Brooks. Mel. Mel Brooks. No, no. no. Are you talking um, about the guy that's from Honey? He did I Shrunk Blazing the Kid. Saddles and stuff. Yes, right? he did Blazing Saddles he and a couple was, others. Uh, uh, I'm sure it's not Mel it? something. Look it's at no, it's oh no, it is Mel Brooks. Okay, you're right. Yeah, Mel Brooks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, fucking space balls. <laughs> you gotta, oh, it's OG. Wait, the Mel. Schwartz. Oh no, wait. Who's Mel Brooks though? What does he look like? So he he played uh, Yoda, the Yoda knockoff in Spaceballs. Um, in mm. in uh, Blazing Saddles, he was the mayor or some. In shit Young like that? Frankenstein, I think he plays. Here, I'll I'll just right, play doctor, yeah, right? The yeah, doctor yeah, Frankenstein. Like he. Is yeah, he still alive? Uh, no, no, I think he died recently. Yeah, actually. very recently. Unfortunately. Dude, you want to talk about a movie that could not be seen today? It's fucking Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles, <laughs> yeah. You can put young Mel Brooks. Here's yeah. A, like here's a, that was probably around the time of Spaceballs. Oh, okay, so this is not who I was thinking There's of. him okay. with Gene Wilder. Gene like Wilder, okay. R.I.P. Gene Wilder. I know, R.I.P., dude. Very sad. 
Anyways, um, yeah, that's that's some funny shit right there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> sir, he's an asshole too. M- Man, if m- we're talking about, oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, because we got we got to do the the circle. We got to. Yeah, so uh, next uh, one, uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. All all of, the, and I'm talking about all the classic ones, like, like including also, the new one. The new one, Vacation, was actually really good. I didn't watch uh, it. It was it, funny. It paid homage to the yeah. to the OGs. For I sure. love Vegas yeah. Vacation. Vegas Vacation was great. Uh, like. The Matt. OG one was good too. Yeah, there's a lot of things like Chevy Chase. Christmas is vacation was good. <laughs> they're all good. <laughs> they're all good. Yeah, like Chev- Chevy Chase is so underrated just because he was an asshole, like in real life, apparently. So, but like, I don't care. He was awesome, super funny. Uh, I just always th- I think back to that. We used to watch all the vacation movies like at least once a week. Like that's how much <laughs> my dad watched those Jeez. movies. He fucking loved the vacation movies. <laughs> like we just have fucking CC's Pizza and just watch vacation movies. Uh, I was like, all right, it's Vegas vacation time. That <laughs> was back in the day when like VHS was the option, and yeah. like you could you had to watch the same movie over and over again. Yeah, dude. Oh man. Anyways, what you got? Man? Okay, I guess I'll go with uh, Super Bad. Dude, Super Fuck Bad's yeah. great. It's it's a, it's one of those ones that I think will always be a classic, but I think like it's been kind of brushed under the the rug just because of how like it it couldn't exist today. Like I feel like if those actors don't even want to talk about it because they don't want like people to be like, I can't believe you're part of this. <laughs> like, I also feel like half of the movies on my list would have never been made if it weren't for Super Bad. To be honest with you, it's true. It spawned a whole wave of like silly. Like slapstick well, humor, like that. That was just like I don't know. Why? Why do you say that about Superbad? I'm I'm trying to. Why just, we, just like there's a lot of things from that movie. Like some stuff was kind of sexist. There was a lot yeah, of like uh, people drinking and 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 things happening while they were drunk and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. things that nowadays people would think too much about and yeah. not just be like, oh, it's a comedy. It's fucking stupid. You know, like they'd just be like, wow this is fucked up. <laughs> I'm going to Twitter. <laughs> and then just like, you know, like you don't ever hear them. Like you don't ever hear, uh, uh, Jonah Hill talking about super bad anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's weird. But like, it's one of the best movies I think. Like to so ever many come good out. quotes, you know, like, yeah. like, Oh man, just everything about you that. You look movie. like fucking Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> I always think about that part. The players. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Lovin. Nick Lovin, dude. <laughs> they, uh, His character was so good, dude. Like, uh it really was. I, I like it. the cops. Like they're so like butthurt when McLovin like ditches him. Oh, dude! And he's like, we should be helping him. You know, like <laughs> not cock blocking him. You know, but like, oh man, this is a classic movie, dude. It is. Oh goodness. Uh, but yeah, uh, what you got, Devin? Motherfucking, and this is one of my all-time. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucking, <Okay, like, laughs> that's what's super bad. Uh, one of my all-time favorites, man. Talladega Nights. Oh, oh that's yeah, a good one. That's on mine too. You gotta Fucking have Talladega. That Nights. one, I can I can quote a shit ton out of that one too. Uh, <laughs> I've watched that movie so many fucking times. I like uh, the part where he breaks his arm over the because he won't say he likes crazy. <laughs> Do it, Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> He's like they're little, they're like little bitty pancakes. I had a, a whole mess of crepes this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Will Ferrell is a genius, dude. <laughs> like one of my favorite Will Ferrell movies. It's not going on this list though. Is that uh, uh, <laughs> Casa de Mi Padre? Oh, Have you man. ever watched that? Yeah, like, it's no, really. I've never seen that one. It's like a subtle humor. It's kind of different from his other movies, but like it's <laughs> so funny, dude. <laughs> he speaks Spanish the entire movie. Like you have to watch the movie in subtitles. <laughs> it's fucking awesome, though. Uh, anyways, I'm Chip, I'm gonna jump on you like a spider monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a lumpy butt. <laughs> Man, classic. Okay. Uh, wait, was is that it, you? Is oh, it okay, my turn? so it's mine. No, it's Jamal. Okay. My <laughs> hot rod. Hot rods Fuck definitely yes. go. On uh, my I list got of hot funny. rod. And I figured, yeah, of, I figured y'all were gonna say hot rod. Dude, yeah, hot rod is classic. Andy Samberg. I think this is the pinnacle Andy Samberg movie. Oh yeah. You know, it's the ultimate, and and I think it 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 shot them into like you know Lonely Island fame from mm. that point forward. Dude, you if know? you want like a dose of hilarious modern Andy Samberg shit, you should go watch Pop Star. And Never stop. Oh yeah, stopping. dude. <laughs> Did you ever watch that? Yes. That shit is so fucking funny, dude. It's really good. Never stop. Never. What is never it? Never stop, stop ne- stopping. I no, think. it's never stop. Never stopping. <laughs> 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 never stop. Never stop. <laughs> 
<laughs> but like, <laughs> um, yeah, that shit was really funny. But High Rod's <laughs> am- amazing. Like, there's just something about like, and it's funny because you either love Hot Rod or, or you, you fucking hate it. hate it. Like, there's people that were just like, I walked out of that theater. Some like little riders. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a sample. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> cool, cool beans, beans, dude. There's like yeah, so many classic dude. moments, like when he like slams into the fucking trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking green tea all goddamn day. You want to bring the demons out of me? He's like, who am I going to build raps for now? <laughs> it's like, they just live like that. Like, that's a, it's I like, was too legit. <laughs> now I'm unlegit. <laughs> and therefore, I must quit. He's like, uh, he's like, he's like hey, Denise, uh, you look pretty. She's like, what? He's like, I said you look shitty. <laughs> <laughs> hey babe, let me get a couple of dong bags so we can knock <laughs> dudes. <later. laughs> That's that Will, Will Arnett. Arnett. <laughs> That's Will Arnett, the, the douchebag boyfriend who's like uh, dating the dong bag guy. Yeah, I gotta look. You gotta look. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh. like you want me to grab you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. Oh man, and then like whenever. <laughs> Such Whenever he's telling them, like, because he goes, oh, off, he, oh okay. yeah, because <laughs> yeah. he thought it was gonna be a date with her, and like he he's there too, and like he's telling him the story about his dad, and he's like, how he, he's like, he died instantly the next day, <laughs> and then like, <laughs> and like, uh, uh, what's his name just starts laughing, and like, <laughs> like the douche Will Arnett, is <laughs> just like, wow, that was really stupid, or <laughs> something. Like he just like made his story about his dad dying, <laughs> just like calls him. <laughs> so boring or something but anyways god i love that movie so much all right what you got oh is it me again yep okay um have we already talked about walk hard the dewey oh gosh no we haven't (laughs) walk hard i only ever saw that one once i I fucking love that movie i can't make you a candy house eat us the rain would melt it the sun was washing away (laughs) the sun would melt it that's such a good movie, dude. I don't know. It is a really good movie. I it, I like the. <laughs> we gonna light us a candle. <laughs> I don't remember that part. I got it. <laughs> he like chops his brother in half, and oh, they're yeah. all sad about it. And the mom's like, "We gonna light us a candle tonight." <laughs> <laughs> I like how he chops his brother in half just in general like what that and then like whenever he, he like the first time he like picks up the guitar and starts playing oh it and he just God. has a full grown man voice. Like. I like how they have like a running joke that he's smell blind through the movie <laughs> and he's on like the talk show later in the movie and he's like so do you ever take the time to stop and smell the roses and he's like I can't fucking smell. <laughs> what? What the fuck? All the, the only thing I remember from that movie is his brother getting cut in half. That's it. <laughs> I like the part where he's like, he goes into the like the the closet, the broom closet, and the guy's like smoking weed. Yeah. And he's <laughs> like, he's like, it's the cheapest drug there is. And he's like, but well, what if I get addicted? And he's like, you can't get addicted. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want no part of this shit, do we? Yeah. <laughs> he's like selling him on the drugs while telling it simultaneously. Be like, you don't want no part of this. <laughs> Every Takes single all your time. your bad feelings and turns them into good feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, Dewey. You don't want to do this. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> what you got, Devin? Uh, fucking Zombieland. Zombieland oh, was... Zombieland. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's so a good. classic, dude. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the first one was amazing. And honestly... I I thoroughly enjoyed the second one. I heard the second one was really good. Yeah. I never watched it. The second it one was really good. Uh, uh, only only because of the the blonde like the dumb chick. The, oh yeah, she the was like the best. Did <laughs> <laughs> she like calls Tallahassee? What did she call him? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it was I, so I, fucking I funny though, remember. dude. Like there's something. I've got to watch that. Great. The first one was one of my favorites. And Not yeah. only my favorite, one of my favorite comedies, but one of my favorite zombie movies of all time. It's like, one of my favorite movies of yeah. I've I've seen the first one so many damn times, and like I went into the second one very nervous because I was really worried they were gonna fuck it up, and then I was like, oh, I was like this that was actually really good. I love that movie. It's got so many good elements. Like it's it's got yeah. action. It's got comedy and a really it's good cast love too. Like story. Oh, yeah. the yeah. people that they picked for and then you know Emma it was like Emma the Stone is, yeah. you know, waifu but the only <laughs> <laughs> it was like the only good movie that that with fake michael sarah was in what what's his name uh Oh, God. Oh, fuck. No. Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Michael Cera. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only good movie he's ever been in. And for Woody Harrelson was 
fuck. Woody Harrelson's amazing. Oh, oh man, you he's so feel good. How hard I can punch. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that like start my three part apology. <laughs> That's another movie that would couldn't have existed without Superbad, just because Dude, of that character and yes. like that whole thing. They were like, "We need a Michael Sarah for this. <laughs> like, look we'll at this guy." The part where they go into Bill Murray's house is like my favorite fucking scene, maybe oh, yeah. ever. Like, <laughs> He's I just pretending to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh fuck! Yeah. Uh, okay, my <laughs> my last one is where the Millers. Where oh. the I love We're the Millers. It's such you a guys are getting paid? <laughs> 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 that movie was, like, really good and it underrated. Was. And, like, not a lot of people watched it, I feel like. You know, I mean. I don't know. I Yeah, I think like a lot a of people watched it. Well, for me, like, the people I knew, it was very 50-50. Like, yeah, it was, it was a really good movie, but I feel like not that many people saw it. But then again, they did. I don't know. It's weird. Like, the meme is popular, that one where they're yeah. like, you guys are getting paid, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it's like, I, d- I don't know. I don't ever hear people talk about it. And I thought it was fucking hilarious. It like, was really good. I was like, good. just like out of breath from laughing the whole movie. Like, <laughs> that lucky bastard got to make out with Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> God. Uh, I'm trying to uh, remember any quote besides like the no regrets, dude. And like, yeah, not even one letter. <laughs> he, uh, he's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> <laughs> no. That was like a lot of funny, like situational comedy. Like, That's what it he, is. Where he gets yeah. like bit in the balls with the tarantula, yeah. or like whenever <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's a giant. And he's singing the the t- TLC. Yeah, song. I was gonna say the TLC song. There's a lot of like <laughs> funny stuff in that movie, man. And the dude from uh from uh Community or whatever. What's the or not from? Co- yeah, it is from Community. Oh, uh, which guy? There's a lot of people. Uh, the I guy, can't even remember the guy who's like uh. You know the manly man dude. I forget his name. He's like married to the chick that, uh, like, it's the other couple, the other family oh. that they run into. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. dude, he's pretty funny too. That, that was such a funny movie. <laughs> yeah, great movie. Anyways, what what you got, Brent? What, okay, uh, others? I got a bunch of them. You want me to just run through all of them real quick? Uh, Devin, well, Devin, go lo- with your last one. I've got well, I've got two. Knock about yours Devin? Out. Yeah, yeah, knock yours out, and then oh, I'll okay. go through the rest of mine. Um, well. Actually, I've, 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 I did have one, but I, I thought of another one because we were talking about yeah. uh, We're the Millers, um, Hangover. Oh, that's on mine. The Hangover is another, just a classic yeah. fucking movie. That's yeah. another one that wouldn't I have can, happened yeah. without Superbad, I think. You know what I mean? It's weird, though, that that movie is made by the same guy who made Joker. Like, really? <laughs> the Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Really? I'm not surprised, actually. Yeah. I feel like, you know, the original Hangover was, like, just really well made. Was, like, yeah. you know. Oh, like, yeah, of course. It was such classic. a good idea. And, like, the premise of the movie, the whole thing was funny. Like, I Zach just, Galifianakis was fucking just. Like, oh, yeah. That was, like, his breakout role. You know what I mean? He didn't really do anything great ever since that. <laughs> you know? And then one of my, one of my all-time for the longest time favorite movie uh comedy movies and really like uh trilogies austin powers oh but my god i forgot about specifically, austin powers specifically gold member i fucking love austin powers <laughs> Austin Powers gold member. Oh yeah, dude. Austin that's one of my most quoted movies ever. Yes. Like, you got an issue? He's a tissue. He's a t- <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, I'm from Holland. <laughs> Isn't that weird? You want a smoke and a pancake? Sugar no. and a waffle. <laughs> Bong and a blitz. Crepe and a pipe. <laughs> then there is no pleasing oh, you. I guess there is no. <laughs> you know that's his like his baja. His what? You know his his fa- his dad. Oh his. Father, <laughs> I like the Asian twins. Like, fuck me. He's like, fuck do you kiss your, kiss your mother, mother with that mouth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the uh, and the <laughs> and then I like the uh, oh, what you got? Like Seth Green is just oh, in it. Like, he was so good. Dude. He's just like getting shit on the whole time. Like, uh, Scotty down. Scotty do. <laughs> <laughs> Mini me likes chocolate. Scotty down. <laughs> I, I wish like they the would make another one. Billion dollars <laughs> or the Jay Z rap that he yeah. does. That was yeah. so fucking classic. Uh, those, <laughs> all those movies were so good, man. That, that was peak Mike Myers. It dude. really oh, was. And yeah, and the fact that for the longest time as a kid, I didn't know he played all the character, all those characters. You just thought dude, those were yeah. real people. <laughs> <laughs> he plays so many of the characters. Well, not real in that people, movie. but just like other people. Just <laughs> I couldn't tell that it was Mike Myers in each in each suit. 
Well, yeah, me either. Yeah, like Fat true. Bastard and fucking Doctor you know, Evil. Dr. Fat Evil, Bastard, Dr. Evil, Gold Fat, Member. Fat Bastard's um, voice was just Shrek's voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really and was. I don't, me and uh, me and Tate, my younger brother Tate, we watched that the other day when he was in town, and um, and I was like, Tate, I was like, close your eyes and think of Shrek, and he was like, Holy fuck! Like <laughs> it sounds exactly like Shrek. God, I love that man. Machine I Gun Jerblies. <laughs> Where'd it, you get those? It sucks because, like, nowadays, like, Austin Powers wouldn't make much sense because no. <laughs> there's no 007 movies like that Yeah, I was going to say, the 007 movies have taken a complete, like, Just serious turn. turn. Yeah, yeah, like... And it, it's like, yeah, it would, they couldn't do a, a, a Mike Myers Casino Royale. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> but, like, and also Mini-Me died. That's the sad oh, part. Oh, that is sad. Because yeah, they Vern, were talking Vern about Troyer. doing it. Yeah, I think it was Vernon Troyer... But they it, like for the longest time they said they were working on a fourth uh, Austin Powers like back in like 2018 and then he passed away so I don't know what the deal is maybe That's a shame. maybe they did film some stuff who knows that would be awesome that would anyway. make my life if they yeah if they <laughs> released another one okay. as long as it was good <laughs> so I've got a shitload of other movies so I'm just gonna run through them uh, Airplane I don't know if you which is like the beginning Airplane. of scary movie basically yeah basically the OG like scary movie type I don't know movie. Where you're it was so dumb, but it's like I can really picture funny. the cover. I know what the cover of the movie looks like, but I've never it's, seen it. It's got the president from Scary Movie Three. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's the pilot, right? Yeah. 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 God, that's such uh, a and funny I've movie. seen I've seen videos from it too, where like where they're taking turns smacking the lady or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you can watch that dude. Yes, in, I've never uh, seen the movie, but I know <laughs> he's Uncle Ben, in, or like the Uncle Ben character in uh, Super superhero movie. movie. Yeah, and superhero <laughs> movie is a, a just a slept on fucking funny ass film. I need to go the, watch. I that. completely it's like, forgot it's about Drake it. Drake Bell from Drake and Josh is like Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, Kevin Hart's in it. Kevin Hart's in oh, it. All, yeah, Kevin Hart co-stars. <laughs> and the guy who plays uh, what what's his name? I always think it's the guy from uh, who played the original It, right? It is like the 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 bad guy. Oh, uh, Tim Curry. Tim Curry. I think Tim Curry's in it. I could be wrong. No, it's a guy who looks like Tim Curry. I forget his fucking name. But anyways, he's like he's like coughing into it into like this handkerchief, and there's like blood in it, and the guy's like, "Are you okay?" And he's like. Oh, it's healthy cough blood. <laughs> like, <what's in> <laughs> <laughs> I love that shit, dude. There's not enough movies like with that just dumb humor these yeah. days, you know? I miss it, dude. I miss it a lot. <laughs> oh uh, I feel like that's... Hey, Gus, where's your furniture? <laughs> that's like the last one oh, that dude. they did like that. Dude, they need to do house. another like scary movie movie. I think that would go over really well these days. There's enough scary movies that have come out recently to like really do it fucking hilarious. Like You could do Midsummer or something and make it really funny oh dude yeah or do like hereditary like we need a hereditary oh uh, the the guy that i was thinking of i guess go down a little bit yeah i don't see his name but anyways tracy morgan but yeah it's a, it's a great movie anyways okay. brent i gotta going. mention my uh, 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 my ben stiller movies uh fucking tropic thunder of oh course. dude oh tropic thunder is a classic yeah. so classic <laughs> and zoolander the watch dude. is actually really good too dude, yeah I'm yeah. the dude playing the dude disguised as another dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was really into Zoolander as a kid. I don't know. Like, yeah, Zoolander was funny. Oh, man! <laughs> uh, they're just like dancing, like playing around with the gas. Like, at the <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, Pouring it all over them. Is a school for ants? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it needs to be at least three times. This <laughs> 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 Fucking uh, blue steel. Oh, yeah. dude. That's such a classic movie. Very classic. Uh, and then I got Borat on here. Bor uh, I thought about putting Borat on there, but it's like... Borat I, was just so funny to me. Yeah, I watched it recently, and it was still really funny to me. So It hits hard, dude. It's one of those movies that, like, you... Like, he did it again, though. He even did it, like, recent. Borat 2 was... Just as good It was to me. just as good, yeah. Yeah, maybe even better just because it's more relevant <coughs> right now. Yeah, it was um, great. We already talked about Talladega Nights, but I have to mention Anchorman and Step Brothers. Oh, oh fucking of Anchorman and, yeah. Yeah, and Step Brothers. Those are both like Step absolute Brothers classic. is unbeatable. I think Anchorman, Anchorman was unbeatable until Step Brothers. And Step Brothers was like freaking so funny, dude. Like <laughs> Anchorman was really good too, though. Like a lot of the jokes from Anchorman still like 
just I honestly like Anchorman more than Step Brothers. Yeah. I found I found Anchorman a lot more really lot funny. I don't know. I think they're about equal in my yeah. eyes. I, I the Canalina wine makes her thing, and the Sex Panther. I don't know. It's all funny. <laughs> I, I I like it. <laughs> uh, and my last one Brett is Brett killed a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Brett killed a guy. That escalated quickly. <laughs> I, I love lamp. I'm in a I love box of emotion. Rick, you really love the lamp. Or are you <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. He put it back. St- you know, you know that they just improv like most of that shit. Like I like the part where they're singing the "Gonna find my baby, gonna hold her tight." Dude, I fucking love that movie. <laughs> and yep. then my last one is Pineapple Express. Uh, Dude, oh why? Why my, didn't I think of that? One of my favorite movies of all time. I fucking Such love classic. Pineapple Express. I love Bill Hader. I love oh all the actors from that movie. Fucking. Um, you know, Bill Hader was Bill Hader. He was, was in it for just a little bit, but that, his his performance really sticks out to me. I don't know. I feel like it, that's like <laughs> James Franco's best part he's ever played. Dude, like, every time I see James Franco, <laughs> that's what I think about. It's just him with long hair, like he's holding like a so lovable like. in that movie. <laughs> like you just like he's almost like a puppy. Like you just kind of feel bad for him the whole yeah, time. Yes. <laughs> he's just like trying to be his best friend, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, man, you should hang out. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> I, r- I really got to go. I thought her talking game season was over. Talking about Anchorman and Steve Carell made me think of a uh, 40-year-old virgin. Oh, man. <laughs> that's yeah, a classic that's another as well. good one. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. It's making me, yeah. It's making me think of all these old. I need to go back and watch a lot of these. I need to watch some comedy. Yeah, guys, For if real. y'all have any comedies that we forgot about, please <coughs> leave them in the comment section of our video. If you're watching the video. Yeah, in the video. And if you're not watching the video, go over to the Facebook group and talk with us about comedy films over there. Uh, yep. And so we're going to jump on over to the final part of the show. That's right. It's Brent's. Wait, we're not doing questions? That's what. Uh, oh, yeah, we're questions. Doing, I'm we're so questions. sorry. Yeah. We're not Whoa. jumping to the last part of the show. <laughs> Whoa. I, because we did Sarah Brock's <laughs> thing, I, in my head, I was like, we've already done questions. So, so uh, we're going to jump to the people's champ, actually. So we have two little things left here. Uh, so, Brenton, who is the champion this week? Okay. <laughs> okay. I think it's going to be Aaron Jones, Jones this week. He says, do you think game development is becoming too lengthy? My main problem with game announcements is a three-second teaser, then radio silence for years. Does it really make sense to have games in development for half a console's life cycle? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, if it's in develop, they uh, shouldn't announce it. Yeah. I think that's right. what I was just about to say. Yeah. yeah, just keep it under wraps until you actually have something that's going to be around soon. Instead yeah. of, I think Bethesda well. made a dumb move announcing Elder Scrolls Six because it's like they don't have anything to show about it. You know what I mean? They were just no. like, "Yeah, we're gonna make it." Like we already knew you were gonna make it. That's like Rockstar being like, we're going to make Grand Theft Auto 6. Like, we know you're going to make it. You know what I mean? (laughs) They're going to make it eventually. (coughs) You know what I mean? It's going to be all online. It's just just going to be GTA Online from now on. Yeah. I I think it sucks that uh, games are taking a long time to develop, but I think the only remedy to making games faster is to try to do like what the Assassin's Creed games are doing right now and have like shitloads of different studios working on different parts of the game. You know what I mean? Which could be bad. Which could end up bad if you're not like super coordinated and professional Bugs and like a big studio you know like or about the that game because that'd be the only games you would be getting you know what i'm saying yeah. it's like uh i i think like it, like we said it's just don't announce it until you're ready yeah you know? i think so too uh, yeah anyways um okay uh moving on listener questions yeah we got listener questions we got john evans turner here he says uh okay i need to know what are the games i need to play now I'm heavy on Apex, but I need a change. Ooh, you can uh, come suck it up with us in Warzone. Yeah, you can, you can come <laughs> and play some Warzone with us. Uh, let us know if you want to play some Warzone. But uh, that game's fun. Uh what what else is fun? Well, what kind of yeah? What I don't know. I mean, I guess a lot of examples it's like are we of. are we trying to do something like Apex or do we want just a whole different thing? You know, if you want like a dope story, go play that Plague Tale Innocence game. You know, yeah, what I mean? get get Game Pass if you don't have Game yeah. Pass because you'll have access to so many fucking games That's for a, like ten bucks a month. Especially if you have an well, Android phone, bucks. then you can like play Game Pass on the go, mobily. You or know what if, I'm uh, saying? Money's not too tight. Go get you a Quest Two. Oh yeah. That'll definitely give you something different oh, yeah. to do. You a know? whole new 
new world yeah. to explore. Go yeah. into VR. Yeah. And never come back. But All right. That's yeah, our answer. Similar. That's my answer. VR. Yeah, same. Go get VR. <laughs> yeah, well, d- d- I say get Game Pass because yeah. it's cheap and there's lots of games. Yeah. Or if you're really rich, get both and play Game Pass in your VR headset. Or get Warzone and come play with me and Devin. <laughs> you can do it with SideQuest yeah. with uh, a little help from our friends at SideQuest. Um, okay. We got Nick Geyer here. He says, who won the giveaway the other week? I forgot to watch. We did a giveaway. That was a long time ago. I don't remember who won. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't even remember what we gave away, to be honest Me with either. you. Yeah, Nick, you got to remind us. <laughs> what was it? Wait, what? <laughs> you can't hold us accountable for these things. Oh, oh, I think he meant the Brent Bucks. Oh. oh. <laughs> I was like. Uh, all right, I'm a I was like, holy shit. I was like, I don't even remember giveaway, and I've been with Ma- y'all for well, Maybe yeah, that's what months. he meant. Nick, I'm giving it to you. You get the Brent's fun time, fun bucks. Uh, <laughs> so there I you think go. we gave it already to D- to Dylan, though, didn't we? Mm, I'm, uh, I'm recanting that. Yeah, Dylan. Dylan sorry, uh, the, Dylan. Your fun bucks are actually uh, <laughs> invalid. Invalid, yeah. Null, null and void. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so now we are done with the listener questions. Thanks so much for writing in, guys. And uh, for real, though, John, if you want to play Warzone, let us know yeah. on Facebook. But uh, yes. uh, now was, we're moving over to yes. Brent's crazy ass facts, but ass is spelled with two Zs, okay? Oh. And in the form of questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And in the question form, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so question number one that will turn into a crazy as a fact. I. Uh, what animal can reverse its age when it gets too old so it can cheat death? A jellyfish. Ah, you got it. The immortal yes. jellyfish, otherwise yes. known as Turritopsis I was going like to say like water bear or something. <laughs> <laughs> Those little bastards can live forever, I think. Uh, this uh, is a species of small biologically immortal jellyfish found in worldwide in temper or excuse me found worldwide in temperate to tropic waters. It is one of the few known cases of animals capable of reverting completely to a sexually immature colonial st- or yeah colonial stage after having reached sexual maturity as a solidarity individual. Hmm. Um, others include the jellyfish Loca Locadia undulata. And the species of the genus Aurelia. If the T. dorani jellyfish is exposed to environmental stress, physical assault, or is sick or old, it can revert to the polyp stage, forming a new polyp colony. Uh, it does this through cell development process called transdifferentiation. Or transdifferentiation. I'm sorry, I'm butchering all these. Uh, which alters the differentiated state of the cells and transforms them into new types of cells. <coughs> Theoretically, this process can go on indefinitely, effectively rendering the jellyfish biologically immortal, although in practice individuals can still die. In nature's most teratopious dorini are likely to succumb to predation or disease in the medusa stage without reverting to the polyp form. Yeah, imagine <laughs> if we had that power. Well, right? I want to say that there's... Um I listened to a Joe Rogan podcast a long a while back, and he had a geneticist on there that was like specializing in trying to reverse aging. And I think that they were looking at those jellyfish. Yeah, a and, lot of it's um, what it actually says that right here at the end. It says important target of basic biological aging and pharmaceutical research. Yep. So yeah, because yeah. it's something to do with like the reason that we age, or one of the reasons is that our body gets bad at rewriting the code um, to to keep creating cells, and eventually it gets to the point where we either you know, and our like telomeres unravel like on our DNA. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Our our co- our DNA code it just gets sloppier and sloppier yeah. until we either get cancer or just something fails. Yeah. Uh, Damn, that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. But it is what it is. No, I'm <laughs> 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 no, anyway, so All what, right, I got next? one more for you. All right. Uh, since we're doing the two topics, I got two questions. Uh, the next question is: How big is the average blue whale heart? Yes. Uh, the average blue whale heart. And are we basing this on oh. feet or like comparisons? Or Just what? like compare it to a vehicle. Oh, oh, what kind? A bus. Oh, you got it. Oh, my God. You guys are too smart. I, th- I no. thought I'd trick you with it. Is it a bus or a bug? A bug. I yeah, said a bus. A bug. A bug. Oh, okay. A, bug. Okay, okay. a Volkswagen. Yeah, yep. he, he was right. <laughs> nice. Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. Uh, pretty crazy to think about a, a beetle sized heart just imagine taking a ride hands. in that whale's heart <laughs> well they say <laughs> they're just they, riding in his heart well like. it's literally <laughs> no it's it, its heart is literally big enough that you could you could go in like through through the vo- the valve uh, that yeah, would the be ben- terrifying ben- 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 can you imagine just being stuck in a heart 
<laughs> no, no, I just mean like <laughs> Brent, be so Brent, you're stuck in my heart. <laughs> no, nah, see, I imagine more like a like a Mr. Pickles like fucked up like you just like are sitting inside of this Wells heart like it, it like that Wells just like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude. Uh, Life uh, just pumping through the whale's veins, like yeah. Oh, you could swim through a whale's a blue whale's veins. I remember reading something about that. Heart. No, no, you could. Sw- their veins are so big that a human can swim through their veins. Like, look it up, Google it. Yeah, that's but, fucking crazy. Yeah, I uh, unless this YouTuber was lying to me. Well, the the fact that I had heard was the was swim through its heart. That's what that's what I was saying. Uh, either do. way, you're swimming through any part of this whale. <laughs> that's a big ass animal. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It says that the arteries are so large, in fact, that a full size human could swim through them. Uh, yeah, through the ve- through the well, then, arteries. The well, then my fact stands true too. Then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not dismissing. No, 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 I'm just no. saying it's yeah. even crazy. Yeah. It's just crazy that you could swim through. <laughs> Imagine. I'm like, just imagining a whale like a fucking fun slide, and you're just sliding <laughs> around. <laughs> the whale's like. <laughs> It's just like yeah, spazzing out. You're a horrible <laughs> fucking parasite, but you're having a blast. They just like <laughs> inject you like a rat. Like you're in like this huge syringe, and they just like <laughs> stick the whale and just like dump you in there. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, right. we're just killing whales. What's the other animal? Sharks. We're killing all this yeah. the marine life in what this episode. What is, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh no! Who is that? Oh Lord, that's a pee pee. Oh, uh, it's probably. <laughs> can we uncensor it? Yeah, I mean, can we? I, I don't know. know. I want to oh, no. see it. I wanna, oh, I'm curious. Hello, Alana. How's it going? That's what a pee pee. Who do who did this? I don't know. They're trying to try and uncensor it. Go up, go up. I want to see. Somebody posted. <laughs> it's Debon Uwu. <laughs> I don't. What? I, I don't. Oh, oh. <laughs> Largato Azulzino. All right, what's up, dude? But anyways, <clears throat> and uh, later, Princess Brat, we're, we're rounding out the show. Remember, you've been listening to GameSpeak Podcast, courtesy of GameSpeakPodcast.com. The show posts for free every Wednesday on all podcast platforms, but you can watch it live before anyone else on Twitch.tv slash Podcast every Tuesday evening at 7.50 p.m. CST. Be sure to submit any questions you want us to read on the show to the GameSpeak Podcast Facebook group at Facebook.com slash group slash Podcast. Check out our video content on YouTube.com slash create for sanity and if you want to stay up to date with your boys you can find me on twitter at the handle i'll draw for jamel brent at brent has one devin at dev andreas and uh check out the <laughs> game speak podcast instagram until next time listeners Later. Later.